welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, we've got it. We've been, we've been told that someone is about to swoop in Batman like behind us. Yeah. Uh, He's going to so drop from the ceiling. We're going to vamp and And if he doesn't, we're going to be very disappointed. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, it's me, Andrew. Um, I just wanted to say uh, there will be timestamps for this final thing once it's up within 24 hours. So if you are here at the beginning watching this when it is loaded up and you want to skip around, there will be timestamps later. That, right. That's that's what I got to say. Also, the nature right. of live streams is that they're going to be long. I don't know how long this one's going to be. What are you guys doing? I don't know. I'm going to leave now. Yeah. Goodbye. We'll, 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 we'll probably... Yeah, we'll, we'll decide as we go how long this one will be. Yeah. We may have oh. other things to do besides this. But what? You're not also, done? Also. Oh, oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> um, feel free to ask questions in the chat. If I think they're relevant to be answered in this particular stream, I will shoot them to these folks here. Hey. And if he doesn't ask them, then you blame him. Yeah, yep. you can blame, him, blame not, Andrew. Not these two. Yeah. It's me. I'm the arbiter of questions. But, you know, if they're Elder Scrolls or development related, no, we're not adding things to the game at this time. <laughs> we are going to be taking things out of anything. Blah, blah, blah. Not okay. components, but like. It's not going to have a mechanics. game board. Like, mecha uh, mecha we're taking out all the races. There's not, not going to be any more. There are no mechanics there. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's It's all up here. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 a tabletop RPG now. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Ryan. I'm Salem, and we are going to be doing something, trying something a little new uh, today. That uh, if people like it, we're going to try to do it a, a bit more because it's kind of a fun mm -hmm. thing, and hopefully, it gives you kind of a unique perspective into how game design works here. Anyway, and it's also something that will allow. Uh, Andrew to do a stream pretty easily. It kind of t kills two birds with, with one stone. So yeah, um, basically what we're doing it's uh, a live stream playtest session. So uh, unlike some of the other things we've done with uh, with Elder Scrolls, where we are doing uh, you know kind of playthroughs that explain things or like kind of like introing people into the game, like a showcase or yeah. something. We will kind of explain some of that stuff, but mostly what we're doing now is uh, we're in a a period of time right now in uh, development where we're testing a lot of things in-house to make sure that they are working, uh, you know, for the for end games. So kind of before we send them out to external stuff, and then for some of the other quests, kind of just trying to check them off and be like, okay, this one is actually looking pretty good. We want to sign off on it and basically mm -hmm. be done with it. And uh, we were kind of thinking, you know, we have a lot of fun going through these and kind of figuring out like how to make this stuff work, like what's working, what's not working, taking notes, that kind of a thing. And we thought, oh, maybe people would like to see how that works. And we can kind of do our work while letting you guys in on how that process works. So we're going to be doing a little bit less explanation than we usually do. We'll do some. But mostly we're going to be playing uh, through uh, what we're testing today and you know, seeing how it plays. And mm -hmm. so I will warn you, like, if, if something seems not good to you, like, that is what we're doing. We are yeah. play testing it. And so a lot of times when we have ideas... Uh, they actually do start out uh, being pretty good, but it's a lot of times we have ideas, they start out being not as good or just needing some work and stuff. And so yep. what you're going to be see, the first thing, especially if we if we might do more than one thing, we'll see. But the first thing you're going to see us play today is something that we have never played before. Yep. Um, so uh, we have designed it. We have written down like how it's supposed to work, but we have not played it. So if you're like, that seems bad. Well, it's a good chance that like maybe we also think that. Uh, hopefully it won't seem that way. Hopefully it'll be like, oh, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there are gonna be some adjustments we'll have to make. We will talk about those on the stream today. And so you can probably see one of us taking notes or things like that. And oh, you do you have see, a notebook? I, I don't have a notebook, but I do have this, which I'll take some okay. notes on, so. I forgot to grab um, my notebook. It's all good. Um, so anyway, just wanted to explain a little bit of what this is, how it's going to be working. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see what we do after mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, so what we're actually doing today is so last week Sam and I started uh, playing through. I'm gonna sneak in. Oh yeah. If you do like these playtesting streams, like Ryan said, just let us know. Yeah, and if you say don't, it in the comments. if you don't, make sure to email Andrew directly. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, it's um, at uh, www. I don't care. www um, um, for email. Um, <laughs> it's a weird email. So there, yeah, at one two three Fake Street. Um, but yeah, let us know so we can actually do them. Um, it's a as and Toro. Yes. Uh, as don't, yeah. don't tell people my name. Because <laughs> like obviously, like we we want to do weekly live streams as often as we can because yes. it's a fun way to connect and fun way to sort of give people like the inside scoops, see how the world of board game works as well. So, but we don't necessarily always have 
fancy polished things to show off. We don't always have like new content to show off, yeah. all these things, and we have still obviously a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of like a, well, what if we could do both? You know, what if yeah. we could do our normal work on stream? Yeah. Now granted, I do also just want to preface as well, being on live stream as much as we might be like, okay, we're gonna try and be a little bit less explained, you know, a little bit less, like we're not gonna show everything off in a close out. It's also still not gonna be like a true raw, like fly on the wall you know like fly on the wall thing because we know we're on camera we know we're you know we have our space set up in a way that's better for streaming not better for us doing it so um i saw a, a really good comment i wanted to point out um regarding our last live stream somebody mentioned something about how like we didn't really use uh our items um and someone was worried like oh no does that mean items just aren't very useful and in our Discord, if you're in our Discord, uh, there are some uh, great responses from both Shannon and um, one of our other Discord viewers who was like, the items are like impactful. They're also on live stream. And it is very easy to forget something when you are also playing to a camera. And I can, we are not professional like entertainers. You know, we are not like, you know, people on, you know, who do live streaming for a living. Uh, so it is very easy. I'll say personally, it's very easy to forget a specific component and things like that. So I just want to put that out there as well. That could very well be true here, especially since we're also working through new content, new stuff that if there's something that you're concerned about, like, uh oh, is this a red flag? Like, just keep in mind there is that level of like, yeah. we're trying to also do a stream. Yeah. So anyway, now that I got that out of yeah. the way. I'll go, I'll go. So uh, last week, Sam and I, so one, one thing we're, we're testing a lot here in the office right now is the end games. So I know we've talked about this before, but basically the uh, Elder Scrolls games are three sessions. If you succeed even at only one of the sessions, but... Uh, well, so we changed it. Now, you do have to succeed oh, both, right, yeah. but we, we reworked it so you can't ever fail a session, but yeah. you're given kind of a once per campaign bailout almost, yeah. uh, where the guild comes in and gives you a huge benefit that should hopefully be enough to help you win that session. Yeah. So, um, so anyhow, like uh, the third session of that is this end game, which is kind of like it's sort of evolved into like a multi-step boss. Yeah, boss run almost. Yeah. 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 And um, so most of them, I think, are all of them maybe uh, right now are like three steps, mm -hmm. and um, there's usually like a couple of combat steps and a non-combat step. Uh, and um, so that's something that we're, we're working on is kind of like testing all these out, uh, coming up with like what the keywords that you're gaining throughout the adventure, what they give you, um, how they make the, how they change, how, how that makes each one of the, the encounters feel different, that kind of a thing. And uh, so we were testing much of those last week. We got partway through, we got basically halfway through the, um, the Morrowind one. And so we were like, well, let's just like, jump in kind of like already in progress and keep on working on the Morrowind uh, end game. So that's what we're mm -hmm. gonna do first today and then we have time, we might do something else. Uh, we'll switch, switch over to like a different end game. Yeah, and yeah. And work um, through some of those steps. Yeah, so this is one that I worked on uh, and Salem originally didn't wanna do one that they worked on. We might end up doing I didn't want to, there was a specific one I didn't uh, wanna do. It's not that I didn't wanna do one I worked on. Yeah. It was just, I thought that the Valenwood yeah. one wouldn't be quite ready even to show in stream, even in an unfinished state. Yeah. It was actually more finished than I thought it was when I looked at the spreadsheet today. I'm like, oh, actually we could do this. But then the printer stopped working, so. Well, I think Sam <laughs> just wanted to throw me under the bus. Uh, so if this one is bad. So. We can blame Ryan. But I can, you know. <laughs> the last time I was on camera here, someone compared me to a vampire in the comments, so I can take it. I'm good, I'm good on it, so. Uh, hopefully I look a little bit less like I need a quart of blood uh, today, so. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Yes. Well, it is, it is uh, Halloween season. Maybe I have been feasting in the night. Um, so, uh, a question that has come. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, is a graphic improvement of the character maps planned? Right now, they are unattractive and a bit boring. Uh, pop down to the view of Salem's character. Um, so, I mean, I can't necessarily speak to your exact taste. So, as far as like what's boring, what's not, those kind of things. Um, I can say that these mats, these physical ones, mm -hmm. are outdated. Uh, they have been cleaned up a lot. Uh, they've been given, they've, we've removed information that's no longer relevant. We've added information that is helpful. Um, and they do look a lot nicer. And I, but I can't totally speak to if the new nicer would be 
your personal taste as far as yeah. exciting or whatnot. That's, I mean, I can't, I can't speak to that because I don't know what individuals like. I, th um, I think aesthetically, like we generally like like the direction that these yeah, are going oh, yeah, in, yeah. and um, and they will not be changing super significantly in that regard. Mm -hmm. Like like they're 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 going to like the, the the UX basically is going to get cleaned up a little bit. Um, there's some numbers that are on here right now that don't need to be there that will be gone. There's numbers that aren't on here right now that do need to be here that will be added. Uh, I think also like they are a little bit when we when these were originally made i think we really jazzed up the colors on them because like the rest of the game was not looking as colorful and that has yeah. now that the, problem has been solved and so now these maybe look a little bit too jazzed, too jazzed up, <laughs> and so they might get like a little bit more like kind of retain some of the same like, color scheme vibes but like make might, might get a little bit more washed out um we are not we obviously like you know talk to graphics their graphics team about this stuff and what people are kind of observing and playtesting and stuff, but ultimately, like that is their kind of they go away, they take that, they go away, they make the stuff, and then we mm -hmm. kind of convene on it. So that is something that they are working on currently. So yeah. we 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 I don't know what exactly what the current iteration of the thing looks like. And um, I do believe too, even things down to the graphic design of mats and everything. That's also something we still work with our licensor partner. Correct? Like even I, I don't know exactly how much they influence but like i imagine they still have like some like can't look this specific way or things like that right and you would know uh, yeah, more yeah, than yeah yeah i'll ask yeah uh zen max bethesda they will definitely every all, all the all of the graphic design stuff is stuff that they will be approving as well so what i would say as well problem. graphic design wise i would call a character mat your your salad your salad greens right <laughs> and then your race and your class and all of your skills become the accoutrement oh. yeah like that, that's so this what, is the ice what's... this is the iceberg lettuce is what you're saying yeah this is the character mat itself this is the, shouldn't have a bunch these are of the cut up carrots like, yeah, it shouldn't have too much like actual images on it, right? Because it distracts yeah. from how unique each character can be. Yeah, we don't want it to be. We, we don't want it to be too busy. It also, it's it's you know, uh, Andrew just got back from Essen, and so now he's you know using various <laughs> European languages, uh, yeah. making me nervous. Languages, and you know, truly, he's kind of saying he's more sophisticated than all of us who in had to remain stateside. In regards to Essen, there's there's so many nice people in the chat that are saying thank you to you, thank you, thank you oh. for sitting for a demo. You're very sweet for being here. I know it's probably a weird time for you because uh, <laughs> I believe it would be like five a.m. <laughs> or seven p.m. All right, well. Um, so anyway, that's what we're doing today. We're doing the second. We're kind of doing the second like battle area yep. of uh, of the Morrowind Endgame. So, so um, our our maps are kind of in like a state as if we were our, like because you don't get to refresh your bat your your mat every battle. Um, you don't get to heal for full like stuff and cooldown kind mm -hmm. of sticks with you between battle to battle. And we didn't have a chance to go to an inn or anything because this is sort of like the final Endgame quest is like. A little bit shorter than normal because it's like a boss rush you know mm -hmm. it's a gauntlet um so it kind of is like all right hope you spent the last two sessions building planning refining your build yeah getting a leg up anywhere you could because in the final session it's sort of like okay put everything now to the test yep so um just to, to quick go over like what we have in front of us uh so what you you're a you're a argonian, argonian ranger. ranger and you've got what light armor uh, yeah, I'm sort of doing almost like a bit of a... I took light armor, which is a magic enhancing thing, but I don't really have any magic. In fact, that's my only magic line. The reason I took it, though, is so I could take one that lets me add my magicka to my stamina for movement, so I can move up to six if I'm using it. And then more specifically, there's like kind of a bit of a spell sword uh, skill in light armor that lets you uh, re-roll skill dice rolled in other battle forms besides magic. So it is meant... To sort of be like, yeah, a bit of a spell sword. Like, okay, cool. You're using your magic to enhance your physical abilities. Um, and yeah, I also took two-handed, bow, and acrobatics. Uh, yep. I am a dark elf pilgrim. Pilgrim is secretly one of my favorite uh, classes. And I I didn't realize this when I built this, but we kind of realized this last week in testing, that uh, if you are looking for like some cool kind of like hacks, like the uh, the the pilgrim maxed out illusion uh, illusion skill line combo is a very good one. Uh, so um, anyway, it's I've got broken. We're gonna I've nerf. Got, no, no, it's good. <laughs> it's good. And um, so the I've got illusion magic. I've got uh, restoration, and I've got 
destruction staff. So I don't have any non-magic uh, skill on. Mm. So. Um, oh yeah, because you even have one not even trained. Because you went. Did you get a full six in illusion? Uh, yeah, I got full six. Yeah, okay, it's all trained so, yeah. now. It's yeah. all trained now. Oh no, I just Scouts. meant you don't have you don't have something. You have an empty oh, yeah. attribute slot. That's right. Because yes. you wouldn't be able to put any dice in it anyway. Yes. Um, Whereas I've sort of got more of a four and two split between my opposing sides. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've got. I've also got the glyph of stamina enchanted me currently, which gives me let, lets me use my magic stat as my stamina for the, so for the oh, okay. purposes of movement. So, if you see me moving four spaces when I only have a stamina stat of three, that's why. That's why. Um, yeah. So, should we? Uh, should we hop to it? Let's hop to it. Okay. Um, so just not to spoil, like, because like that's that's always a bit of like how we've been approaching this because like obviously on one side we want to get people excited for what's in the game we want people to understand what's in the game and know what they're getting um, but on the other side there's that level of like ooh, we don't want to spoil things because you know we want people to do an end game and be like what the heck we're fighting a big thing or whatever <laughs> um but to just sort of give some context uh the earlier two steps in this so we're doing the step three for morrowind so mm -hmm. which is the final step for the end game uh, step one, we sort of got a chance to do some preparation, do some last minute, you know, like he, uh, getting some items or healing or getting some extra XP to try and make the next step easier. Um, then step two was like a big battle in the Morrowind dungeon where we had to fight like this big thing that the... Let's not say what we had. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say it's, it's this big thing that the main villain was going to try and use yeah, to yeah. cause havoc in Morrowind. So we had to fight it. Um, and we won. It... Yeah. Uh, I remember the biggest threat was actually one of the twenties that spawned ended up just synergizing <laughs> horribly against us, and yeah. that guy ended up being like the scariest thing in the room. But that's you know part of the fun is like you could do the same end game with different keywords that yeah. drastically change your strategy, but then also different enemies might pop up that mm -hmm. all of a sudden change now the dynamics of that fight. Uh, so I'm looking a little bit worse for wear. You are looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of stuff in my like cooldown, cool but... which is uh, my first cooldown is going to give me back virtually nothing. But um, yeah, so, uh, this, the, so the second kind of combat step is kind of, it's sort of like a, a Metroid inspired, like when you finish a Metroid game, there's usually a sequence where you have to like rush out while like the planet is collapsing or whatever. <laughs> and so we're kind of trying to like see if we can replicate that. You know, again, we have not played it before, so we'll see how it actually works. So if it's underwhelming, yeah, we'll uh, probably be the first ones to feel it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna. I wrote this one, and I made a bunch of little notes uh, in here. So I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read it and help set it up. This is a relatively easy setup uh, for this particular step. Um, and we'll go through after I set this up. Then we'll go through. I'll, there, we have one keyword that that will affect us. Okay. So, um, all right. So. To succeed in this encounter, all adventurers must be undefeated. This is a delve we're doing on this on the same delve tile at the end of a round, after which the party is revealed sky shards equal to, uh, to two plus party size. Okay, so two plus party size, so, so we four. Have to, we have to go four, and then we have to, uh, be undefeated on the same delve tile at the end of a round. So if either of us is defeated and we don't have a way to bring somebody back, that's it. Uh, currently, yes. Currently, okay. Um, and then also it says each each sky shard tile only reveals one sky shard. And okay, so many. We, okay, so the, there's double sky shard cards in the game. Those would still only give us one. Correct. Okay. All right. At the end of each round, before checking the victory conditions, so like before we would be able to be like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, we so we, we have to tally the number of sky shards revealed during the round, and remove a number of del tiles equal to that number plus one from the play space. Oh. Okay. Um, the smallest tiles must be removed first. This includes the entrance tile. Uh, at any units on, an, on a delve tile that, that are removed are immediately defeated. If the removal of a delve tile makes a door hex explorable again, it may be explored by a party member on their turn. Adventurers may take multiple rounds each, uh, multiple turns each round by reducing their HP stat by one and draining a die at the start of each extra turn. So not just not just losing a health, reducing HP stat Correct. completely. Okay. Yes. Um, any adventurer who chose to uh, review the maps in step one, which I did do and you did not, um, may choose instead to lose one, to just lose one HP. To do oh, that. wow. Okay. Um, All right. Now I feel selfish. Um, then during a, during a round in which uh, the quest unit Zerik did not start in play, place him on an open space in the first room revealed by expiration. That okay. Round. So Zerik, our quest, our quest unit here, this, uh, you know, uh, a 
a dark elf of questionable uh, morals will be reoccurring to attack us. Mm -hmm. over here. Um, so we also have these keywords. So uh, keywords are things you gain from successfully completing quests, and they will uh, alter the end game you know, depending on which uh, region you're in. So mm -hmm. we use one of our uh, our one of our uh, uh, keywords was gain ally, which we had in the previous step, but our ally did sadly perish. Oh, so he, he got, was not with us. He got destroyed, didn't well, he? Yeah, we we, it, we you know, he also took forever to arrive. Uh, yeah. So we did we did alter that. Which keyword. I think we made a few notes on, right? Yes. I yeah. Put, I put that yeah. So then. <laughs> so sadly, he did perish. So one of our other keywords we had is recover reagent. So. Your work in securing reagents vital to Dessandra's mission has allowed you to brute antidotes to the weaponized Lotus Plague in these caves. When calculating the number of Delft Tales to remove each round, subtract one from the total. So essentially now, it only reveals equal to the number of Sky Shards revealed, not Sky Shards plus one. Okay. And I'm not sure about this one because I think it might... That might be too good mm -hmm. in terms of like the urgency, but we'll see. That's okay. what we're testing today. And so. we want to we want to to be clear. We want the keywords to feel good. Yeah. To yeah. like really feel like you look back and go, wow. If it wasn't for that keyword, I don't know how we would have won this. You know, kind yeah. of kind of vibes. Correct. So, uh, yeah. So we can we can get her going. All right. Um, uh, who should I should go first? Um, well, you're healthier. That's true. But only by one, actually. So. Maybe I'll go first. I've got I've got okay. worst case scenario. I've got Argonian resistance I can use. Okay. So I thought I was going first <laughs> uh, uh, because I spawned that we populate right. So this correct. works like a normal delve works except like for delve, yep. sky shards that give two only give one. That's yes, the only yes. real difference at the moment. All right, we've got ourselves an outpost. It's going to be a three. Sky when shard. revealed, each adventurer may discard any number of common or legendary items from their ready slots and gain an equal number of items from the corresponding deck, placing them into ready slots. So if you have any items you don't like, now's your chance. Uh, it's going to spawn a 20. Okay. And then... And Zurich. And Zurich. Oh, is that oh, the first... This is the first one we explored. Yeah. First Sky Shard or first... Just as, it's just his first, first tile. First tile you explore, okay. yeah. Um, just as a notes question, uh, what would happen if all of those enemy spots were already populated? Does he just spawn on a unoccupied, or does he yeah. spawn on the first um, enemy hex tile that is unoccupied? I'll put open space. I mean, he'll spawn this time regardless, but just uh, something we'll want to make sure is clarified. If not possible. Ooh, ooh, Post this is open space. This is a good sky shard effect though, because we don't really need to gain sky shards, right? Uh, correct. We just need to reveal them. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how do how do we win again? We have to get on. We have to get on to. We have to end our turn on or end the round where we're both on the same tile. Just both on the same tile? Yeah. After we've revealed. Oh, after before, we've. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, it was the real view, revealed part, but it's yeah. reveal not collect. Correct. Currently, yes. Okay. But we maybe should do collect. But we'll we'll this is, we'll figure this out. Yes. Uh, the only reason I say that is so this sky shard effect is the party may choose to discard this sky shard without gaining it. If they do, deal five true damage to all non-quest enemies in play. How that could help us is if we only need to reveal these but not gain them, mm -hmm. we could just discard this no problem. But right. if it's gained, then we would have to make that. Well, let's choice. play with reveal for now, and then okay. we can see. So we're, about, we're dropping a twenty out here. So we got how much health? Uh, how do you say this? Oh, Lamia, Lamia, Lamia. Lame. I mean, it's if you've gone Lamia. up against it, you'd probably call it a lame Ia because they are awful. I hate these guys. They're okay. not the worst, but they're up there. All right, and then we got to spawn. Uh, oh gosh. So where should we put old Zurich here? Old Zurich. Pause. Honestly, we might be better off just trying to kill Zerik and have him put a number onto the Lamia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Lamia's got zero attack, so that seems great, but it's got Enfeeble 4, which means that when he is, whoever his targets are, gain four light fatigue, and our cooldowns are already pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, also has Vine Snare, which means we'd have to drain a combat skill, um, whereas Zerik, I think Zerik is actually probably much more uh, killable. 
Mm -hmm. And he'll use Penumbra, which means he'll sort of like replace this guy. And then we'll have a eight health Xeric to deal with, but that's easier than the Lamia in my opinion. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so should I take my turn then? Go for it. Okay, so what is it pronounced? How is it pronounced? Lamia? Lamia. <laughs> Lamia. I love the joke when you said. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not, a, <laughs> it's not a real creature. I don't know. I, um, okay, so I don't have anything that triggers at start of turn. So I'm going to do my cooldown. It's a shame. I could have used this to damage Zyrick. All right. Okay, so now typically I've got a lot of bow stuff. I wouldn't be able to use that against Zyrick because I can't target um, adjacent. I could move away. However, I do have this item, this steel crossbow, name pending. Uh, the rat skewer bow. The rat skewer bow. That's it's also pending. But also sorry. pending. That's our current pending. Uh, which lets me, so normally you can't target adjacent people with bow, but this lets me do that. So I could still, without even needing to move. Um, which, all right, so I'm going to take my first engage. I'm going to switch to a bow and... Oh, here we go. You ready for this? Da, da, da. Are you ready for this? Okay. So I'm going to roll. Oh, gosh. No, I'm, I probably shouldn't roll all of these. No, I'm going to do it. Why not? All right. I'm going to target Zyrick. I'm going to roll these. Okay. So I deal two damage, one damage. I get a tenacity. But this lets me keep re-rolling it and applying more and more damage. But mm -hmm. it's got a really negative side where if I hit it, it essentially blows up in my face, which is why I have this die, though. All right, so that's two damage to Zyrick. Five damage to Zyrick. Oh, my gosh. There we go. I have never gotten that lucky with that die before. Uh, is that seven damage? So that would kill him. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to deal seven damage to him. He's got one defense, so that kills him. He is then going to move over to here. That's his penumbra power. That is his penumbra power. And then I'm going to use this to apply the damage I dealt to my target to another targetable enemy, which is going to be him again. <laughs> and so he's going to take seven more damage. So there we go. Okay. All right. I was nervous that was going to go much, much worse, but sometimes I can roll well. It's rare, but I can do it. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's like whenever I'm doing private playtesting, I'm like getting the worst rolls of my life. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so hard. And then we show it off to people and it's like nothing but successes all day. Are you done? Uh, I'm So this is, this is interesting. This is, this is, so look, mm -hmm. right now, so now if we were playing this normally without the keyword, we're having, these these tiles currently would both go away. Oh my gosh. Because we, we it's, Ooh, one, so, it's one plus the number of success. Yeah. Now, because of our keyword, only one of them will go away, and it will be this one because it's a smaller one, right? Um, so, <laughs> oh jeez, we could just just stay take here, the damage let... from Zirik, and then he'd go away. But remember, he'll come back out later. Mm -hmm. But like then, basically, like we can try again from that yeah. tile. Um, because otherwise, what we probably would need to do is we need to kill him and then probably get over to the next area. Mm -hmm. And I, I could I could also run in here. One of us could run in here, pick the lock, and run back out. I do have uh, Razix Opus too, uh, so I could pick block pretty easily. I don't have very good, very good items, so I would uh, be happy to get that, that whatever that item is. Um, but sure. I mean, if, I mean, like if we think it's it's worth it to like spend a little bit more to kill him, so he won't be able to attack us. Because he, he does do poison. He would poison oh, us. Oh yeah, that's no so. Good. Would you be able to kill him? Otherwise, I yeah, I should be able to kill him. Okay. All right. In which case, I'm gonna move back just in case you don't kill him, so he doesn't hit both of us at least. Okay, and I'll move back one more too. So, uh, <laughs> so then he does get both. <laughs> okay, so um, I, got, I will cover. I got these three fatigue out of here. Although I could reduce his enemy movement by one. So if he did move back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that an interrupt? Yeah, it's an interrupt. Okay, reduce well, all enemy movement this round by one. And since I'll, I have this, it would only cost me one to okay, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Um, let's see here. So, I, let's see, I could, I don't have a lot of damage dealing dice out here right now, so other than my, uh, what is this skill called now? It's not Daedric Mines, what is it now? Elemental Rage? Oh yeah, Elemental Rage, which I don't want to use right now, because I want to actually want that item. <laughs> um, 
So maybe it actually would be good for you to do that. What? Can, oh, you, just can you use it on a, on a it, use that any minute? And, oh, it's all, it was all in. All in, yep. Okay. So we're one, two. No, I won't be able to get back anyway. So I'll, I'll try to kill him. Let's see. Wait, don't you have four movement? One, I two, three, four. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll try it. Okay, I'm going to roll uh, this one die, and I guess, what should, should I roll any of these other things? No, these mostly are, I don't need to use these yet. I'm just going to roll this one attack die on, this one uh, destruction staff die on. Um, Sierra. And he's got one defense. So you're, I know. I think you're going to kill him? I might. I don't know. You know one in six chains. Well, I mean, but I can roll these later if I want to. That's not true. Okay, so. Well, don't those require not unquest? What? Don't those require to be on non-quest? These? Yeah. The oh, oh, the no, combat no, no, dice. Sorry, I thought you were talking about your illusion dice. Okay. I apologize to everyone. I'm probably speaking with absolute riddles. Okay, so did one damage to this guy because he soaks, he soaks defense. Then I'll take a fatigue. And I'll... Switch to like bow or something? Switch to bow, yep. Or to ranged. Ranged. Hey, there you go, he's dead. You eating okay. snacks over there? He's dead for now. Um, <laughs> So he's dead. I'm gonna go one, two. All right. Uh, so block breaking dice there. Okay. Got a four. four. Mm, that's too many fours. Too many fours. Uh, okay. I'm gonna. I'll take one fatigue to adjust the one to two, and then I'll. Can you give me a health check? Or I got a wheel. Oh, use your okay. pet. So I'm gonna use my pet, raise Exopus, to change the other one to a three. So uh, I got the wolf pellet. Wait, wait, we're supposed to not use that one. Oh yeah, because okay. it's I've I've rebranded it from a miscellaneous to a piece of armor. The wolf pelt is uh, currently being rebranded. Rebranded. All right, so I got calcinium mace. Uh, one-handed weapon, which I don't think I was probably have any use for, but that's okay. Free, free two tenacity you have, add one free combat skill die to this attack. I so mean, that could still be good, even true. if you don't have other dice in that form. That's if you true. ever have a ton of tenacity, you could just do a free attack with some stuff. Yeah. Now remember, uh, the lockpicking interrupt movement, but it does not stop movement, so I had to move two, so I'm going to go three, four. And that's my turn. Cool. I have a question. Uh, you've drawn a card. Yes. Um, Somebody in the chat asked, in past videos, you've mm -hmm. included a card holder as a thing that is being used in the demos. Is that something that will actually be inside of? I, for for Elder Scrolls, I believe. For, for, for what, what, a uh, like oh. a, a card holder like this. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it obviously won't be this one because or the ones we've shown off because we've just appropriated the burn cycle and trove chest. and trove chest ones, which are not good for this game. I'll just be honest. Yeah, they they're better than just decks on the table, but they are not good for yeah. for this game. The plan currently is uh, to have one, though. But yes. yes, we do plan on having one. All right, so uh, I would collect the sky shard. I mean, it doesn't matter because the sky shard is anything. So uh, we're done, I think, with those with our turns. Yep. Now uh, it's so remember at the end of the round before checking victory condition, uh, tell the number of sky shards revealed during the round and remove a number of deltas equal to that number plus one from the play space. So. And it's the smallest one, so that he that that part of the cavern has fallen away. Oh no! Uh, so it is round two. Okay. Um, All right, time to explore again. Yeah, let's do it. Hopefully, it gives us a bigger piece so we can actually get in. No, oh, <laughs> it's another small one. small one. You shuffled these, right? I did. I did. Okay. Yes. Well, I did it because if I hadn't, they would all be the sky shots. Oh, right, front, right, right. Uh, okay, give me another small one. Okay. The adventurer who reveals this tile may deploy any number of enemies of any levels while on this tile. Well, why would I want to do that? When a level one or level five enemy is defeated on this tile, place a common chest on the hex where they were defeated. When a level 10 or 20 enemy is defeated on this tile, place a legendary chest on the hex where they were defeated. So you can sort of like try to spawn more enemies to get more loot. Personally, I'm okay not spawning anybody, so yeah. we can just okay. explore further. Right. So you hook it up. We, still, right. we do have to put Zerik on one of okay. the spaces. And so I, do, I need six. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, oh, oh but how, did you, chest, how did you rule? Um, if, does he spawn if there is 
I, right now it says he spawns on an open space, and then I changed the I made it so that like if there's no open spaces, he spawns in the closest space to that he can. Okay, so, so we can't spawn an enemy there to stop him from spawning. No, 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 okay. no, no. He. Okay, I just want to. If we if we spawn enemies in all three of these places, he would just he would spawn back here. Okay. Something. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So there's no there is no way that we can like cheese it to get him to not spawn. No, no. Okay. No. Just wanted to make sure. All right. So you want to grab me five more five more HP. There you go. All right, well, let's put them there then, because that's the thing. And then we can just rush by them. Wow. Oh my gosh. Are you sure you shuffled these? I did, I did. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, after populating enemies, place a common chest on each unoccupied hex. Well, there's no... Can I do that? Uh, or would this be better? Uh, we probably don't want to split ourselves up between we'll see i don't know like yeah but, okay um i assume if if there are two of the same size we pick we pick okay good yeah. so as long as you can get into here we're good mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. discard all okay so there is a trap and if i fail discard all items in your ready slots and all chests on this tile oh i should have i forgot to cool down okay um so i've so far moved I was here. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm going to do the chest, or sorry, the uh, the trap first, because mm -hmm. I care more about doing that. So I need a three, four, and a five, and I have three attempts. So I got a three, a four. Attempt number two. I'm not going to risk it. I'll take two life fatigue. All right. Trap All right. is, the trap has been... Trap has been... Averted. Averted. Um, okay, and then I'll do this chest. I'm probably not gonna try too hard, but who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Four, three, six. Six, three. Yeah, I'll, I'll take one life fatigue to do it. Okay, that's what I get. Something good, I hope. Ooh. That is good for you. That is good. Uh, the Rubidite grape. Yeah, grape yeah, I'll probably wanna wait until my cooldown's a little bit more clear before I start using it, so that's pretty good. Okay. Um, okay, and that was one, two, three, four. All right, so that's the end of my movement. I could take another move action to keep going. And you said I could take a additional turn, by, like a full turn you by drain a die from your slots. I think not for your, not not from your cooldown, mm -hmm. and you have to reduce your HP step by one. I have to do both of those, right? Correct. Oof. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it just yet. Okay. Um, I mean, I can explore the next right. one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna roll this one die. Hmm. <laughs> Not what I was hoping for. Wait! 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 Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I am going to take this down by one to reroll. Use my magical enhancement to enhance my acrobatics. Okay. Um, oh, shoot. Are you going to be able to kill him? Uh, probably, yeah. Okay, okay, good. hope so. Um, I don't want him to poison me. Okay, let's see. That would be earth-shatteringly bad <laughs> for him to poison me at my current Strong. state. All right. That's a question I have. If there's no room for a bane in your cooldown, what is it? Um, your oh, no, 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 right nothing happens. No, I, I think something does happen. Oh, I, I think it is... Uh, oh, I always get this... Item, please. Yeah, I, I always get this rule mixed up because I, I don't even think it's actually changed, but my understanding it has changed back and forth. I think it's any time you would gain like a light fatigue or uh or status like it it removes i think it drains I forgot to... cool. oh gosh See, I thought if you got do you have the beyond your meter that you replace the right most light fatigue with an over fatigue. that's true yep so and if you would gain over fatigue i think you replace the right most Light fatigue with over fatigue and then i think it's status dice you drain the right most skill die Okay. Uh, do you have the rules up by chance? I don't. Okay. I'll definitely change this to a six and put another. 
Can I another HP for my Razex Opus friend, please? Yep. There should be eight on there, so it's only six or five, I think. But okay, we got the Waste Shrine map. Uh, discard one initiating and a staple encounter. Well, this is not going to help me at all. Uh, well, that's why you've got this. You've got your that's gilded right. fingers. That's right. you gilded fingers, but I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any tenacity. Well, right whose now. fault is that? I don't know. I gotta fail more, I guess. Roll worse. Um, so here's the thing. I'm. I've got one more movement. Should I, should I move here and explore, or should I just hold up and to make sure he doesn't. Uh, yeah, so he doesn't penumbra, or so he doesn't poison both of us. Sure, as well that too. Yeah, I would maybe not explore. Okay, hold up. Because um, if you don't kill him, then he'd poison both of us if you were here. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you'd go for the strongest, which is you, which means he would be forced to go to that hex. Okay, and that would be bad. All right, then. This time, and then I am gonna use my elemental rage on this die. Still in my magic form again. Well, I got some uh, tenacity. Oh no! Can we see that that I'm that I rolled a fail? Is there a place I should be rolling those, Andrew? Uh, where where are they? I don't see them. Well, they were here. <laughs> yes, that that's in camera. What? That is in camera. Okay, good, good. All right, so um, here are two failures, two just abject failures. So, um, mm -hmm. Gosh, why did I, I should have? Why did I only? Why did I settle for three cooldown? That was a mistake. Um, oh gosh, I regret doing that. Okay, let's see here. I'm not sure if I can do anything about this right now to this to this man. Sorry. To this you could man. do your once per battle. That's true. Do I need to do that yet, though? I guess. So if I did that, let's see. What would I pull out? It doesn't hurt to do that. Um, I'll do. I'll do that. I'll do once for my once per battle, which is. Dynamic. Once per battle, on your turn, recover any four skill dice from your cooldown, replacing each of them with light fatigue. So I will recover these two that I just rolled. And I'll recover this one. Another one of my Jersey's uh, Contest one, and this one. All right, got a lot of fatigue in here. Um. And to to us uh, to to take another engage, I'm going to take another fatigue. So I am I am quite fatigued over here. All right. Um, but now I'm kind of wondering if I should just use my uh, no. I'll do I'll use I'll use uh, this one again and then. Oh, but I can only if I take another. So I took I already took another one. So I can only I can only put two in here. So I can only roll with two. But I'll roll the same two I rolled last time. Well, I get in the tenacity. Do you want me to put that thing over here? Sure. Uh, and I um, use my elemental rage to blow this up, and I can deal five damage to something that is up two spaces away from this. Uh, you don't want to just kill me? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I have knocked him down to two health. Um, and I'm actually going, I think, to use my um, my Wayfarer uh, ability, which is one of the best, one of my favorite uh, uh, things in the, the game. Classes? Which is well, they should be over there. I think they're I think they're not stacked. We're just reaching in too. Oh, there. Yeah. Um, so I can spend three tenacity to. Randomly draw one unused class sheet. I may trigger any one of its non-enduring slash non-interrupt abilities or heal one and deal true damage to an adjacent enemy. Come on, baby. Give me the knight. I would love to use an honor duel on this guy. Right You're going to get the necromancer. Oh, oh my god. Necromancer. I'm you sorry. shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Okay, well, I can't actually do any of this. Stuff. The reason why we're laughing is the Necromancer uh, requires you to have 
um, what's called like a necrosis stack. Yeah. And so since the pilgrim can't get the necrosis stack, can't use anything on the necromancer sheet. Okay. Uh, that being said, though, that's why the wayfarer sort of has like a a backup. Yep. So I can heal one, which I'm I'm at full health, but I can heal one and I can uh, deal one true damage. So I will do true damage to him. So he's not quite dead, but he's almost dead. You take um, an extra turn. That's true. I could, but and I you would have, have the benefit. But my uh, my cooldown is basically full. Well, you would get the it's a full turn. Oh, that's right. right. You're right. Yes. Yeah, so you get to. Oh yeah, I I will do that actually. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I forgot my own rule. Okay, so I will take I will take another turn by dealing myself one true damage. So I get to cool down again here. Um, and I do just want to mention as well. Um, so Ryan said that the reason he's able to do that is because there was a point earlier in the end game that we had to make a decision as to how to proceed. Like, how do we want to prepare? And he studied yeah. a bunch of maps. I did something different that I think gave me a lot of XP at the time, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So I was able to f more finely tune my build going into the end game, and that was really helpful. Whereas now he's getting to do all of this stuff. So um, it's not just a level of like, oh, well, if I had known this is would be the benefit, I would have only ever done that every time. Yeah. Like they're meant to be like different things that will benefit you in different ways. Yep. I'm going to switch to light weapon from a battle form. And I don't need to take fatigue for that because it is I'm, it's I, a, new, a turn. new turn. Yep. Then I will roll these two dice on old Zerk there. All nice. right. Woo. He is dead. All right. Um, and in the interest of not incurring more fatigue, I will <laughs> stop now. All right. All right, so this is round. So end of the round, we, we remove this? No, no, because there's no, we would, but remember our keyword is you subtract one from the amount. So we didn't reveal any sky shards that time. Oh, I thought it was just the sky shards that we have been like collecting or revealing. Uh, no, that's an interesting idea. But right now it's, what's, oh, it's, so it's, it's, it's like the number you revealed that turn. That turn. Okay. Okay. But for us, it's just a number you revealed that turn. Gotcha. So okay. Only the the delve is stable. So. Uh, chat. Let me know if my idea is better. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Vote. Put a poll. Yeah. Put a poll. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, let's, let's create a uh, let's create a uh, what's the word? Like a hyperbolic poll because I don't think anyone will remember either angle at this point. Yeah. Uh, make the poll. Would we rather the game be fun? <laughs> um, <laughs> Or not. All right, it is your turn. All right. <laughs> Game be fun. Um, okay. So I'm going to put my light armor stuff back. Gosh, why did I settle for three cooldown? I took that XP and I didn't have my cooldown. I'm crazy. Okay, at least a four. Like, I think four is my favorite. Five and six is powerful, but it's so expensive. The Chris model. The what? The Chris model. One of our graphics people, Chris, loves to increase his cooldown. Oh, yeah. I mean, it feels good. Like, I... The so poll has been created. Um, you can both rally for votes. Um, oh, I don't think you should have shuffled these ones. Oh. You shuffled the specials in, which are only shuffled in when they're called for. Which? Oh, I think I do want to do that, but that's fine. We can skip them for now. Okay. Oh, so, like, say that make sure these are in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because there's another one. There's one of the keywords that is, like, you can ignore those, basically. Oh, Okay. Uh, well, should we do that then? Sure, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, so, let me let me keep this one on, keep the the one I just drew then on top, and then I'll shuffle the rest of these because I saw what the next like three cards were. Okay. Are people saying they want the game to be not fun? Uh, There's probably at least one. Just as we're, we're at sixty-two percent versus thirty-eight percent. For fun, not fun. <laughs> well, my well, people. For fun, yes. Parenthetical sounds like oh. not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the Ryan <laughs> apologists that are. With. Do you want to? Do you want to be with a fun person or with a vampire? <laughs> All right. So when revealed, deploy this card's enemies on any unoccupied hexes in the delve, then set this card aside. Oh well, that's actually nice. That's good. We can just put them all back there, right? Yeah. Okay. What is? Uh, what is what is the what, like what is the thought process? But or did Logan make this one? So I, I Logan made it. Okay, never mind. We can talk Get about that Logan. In no, no, here. no, no, no. What was I'm, your I'm question? Though? I, was, I was just I was trying to figure out like what is the what is the goal of these usually? So the goal of these is uh, there's a level like you you want to try and get these into the deck. 
Okay. So I think your mention about the keyword saying you get to ignore these, I think would actually be okay. Bad. All right. We can. We can, that's that's great. Um, that's, that's granted. That's granted. We don't get this benefit because this is the last encounter of the game. Yeah, yeah. So there's a benefit on here that's after the delve ends for each of these that we revealed, we get a benefit. So it's like you yeah. want them in the deck, and so you and want to explore give you them. sky shards either, so it makes the sky shards yeah. take longer to get. So yeah. That's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Um, These little skinny little delve we got here going. Whoop. Okay. Okay. So uh, we've got three fives. Three fives. But we can place them wherever we want. Does that mean we can also place Zurich wherever we want? No, he still has okay, to Okay, he still goes. Okay. Ah, he's going to be blocking the door again. No, no, he can we place him at any any hex. Any hex in the tile. Oh, right oh in that so tile. We can put okay. him in there. So not enemy yeah. Okay, sorry. I keep misinterpreting what you're telling okay. me. So we That's got, a, oh, this is a 10. Sorry. We got uh, a Nord Marauder. A Nord Rotter. Okay, let's go we'll we'll back five, here. Six, seven. Yeah, corner. we'll just put them all back there. Okay. Um, we got. The poll has been closed. Um, according uh, to the results, Skeever. we are going to plan on making the game twenty-five percent less fun. Okay. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the Wisp Mother. Wisp Mother. Wait, isn't that Cyrodiil? No. no. Gosh. No. Because the... there's the Will of the Wisp in Cyrodiil, and yeah. then there's the Wisp and Wisp Mother that is just like the generic ones Valen would add, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. So that was one. Oh, and Zurich. Our boy. Are you sure you shuffled these? There's been nothing but threes. I did. You just shuffled them again. Well, I haven't drawn right? since then. Right, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> it's going to be all threes. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I don't... Oh, gosh. I don't know if I can handle... All right. Well, let's keep going. So that's one, two, three. Hey, give me a no sky shard, but no, it's a different but shape. It's a different shape. Place. Wouldn't you want that same shape at this point? Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, we would because we would. <laughs> yeah. Now that they're all out, we would get sky shards. Uh, when revealed, all adventurers re no return each weapon item to their in their ready slot to their pack. Oh no. Oh gosh. Well, here goes my mace out. You get well, that's rough. Um, if unsuccessful, shuffle all. I'll oh, see, I think that's, okay, maybe they're not. Yeah, okay, maybe we will check on these. Cause this is, says like, if unsuccessful, shuffle them back in. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll put a pin in that. We'll okay. take a look. But yeah. um, at the very least, I'm not gonna bother doing that cause you already yeah, have yeah, them in there, so. Okay. All right. That? Or do you want? I'm kind of wondering if we you should. want that? <laughs> go back or like maybe like this so that it's not like getting these guys get through, but mm -hmm. like, you know, if we if we need to go in that direction, we can. You know? Okay. Yeah. All right. So how many faces have you moved now? One, two, three. I, I got can... a one and a five. Uh, so. Five first, so we've got an Argonian Marauder. Five HP. Uh, where do you want to put him? Here or here? Uh, put him here. Okay. Uh, and then a High Elf Bandit. This place is lousy with that. Hello, so. Elf Bandit. All right. Um, I assume you're making a reference that I am not aware of. When you said it's hi, Elf Bandit. So oh, I'm like, hello I there, Elf Bandit. Hello Ooh. there. Terrible. All right. Um, oh. See, yeah, the thing, this is the thing about the, it's a, so, so Penumbra ta puts, you, puts you on what? The weakest allied unit. So that would be the would high Elf Bandit. Currently, right? yes. Yeah. But if we killed the High Elf Bandit and then we killed him, he would go back to the Wisp Mother, right? Yeah, yep. So That'd should nice. I try and kill the High Elf Bandit then? Sure, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Um, easier said than done. 
<laughs> I suppose, yeah, you, your bow, your bow situation is uh, not the best right now. I, I, I'm going to get them all back soon. Yeah. And one more turn. And if I have one more movement, I can maybe... Uh, okay. I mean, um, you could take another turn. I could. I think I might. Okay. Uh, in which case, I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm going to just take another turn then. Okay. So, you just drain us. Drain. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I'll roll this. I'll roll this. Okay. All right. So, I remove a health, right? Yep. And then, and then drain. drain a skill die. Yeah, from from up here, not from your cooldown. I'll do that one. Okay. Um, I'm also gonna weaken. I'm gonna use my enchantment. I'm gonna enchant this level five. Uh, his attack and defense are both reduced by one. Okay. Great. Um. Okay. Take that, you stupid Argonian. All right. So then I'm gonna. I'm taking my second turn. So I get these back, right? Mm-hmm. I am then going to. I've got this. Okay, um, I can't get both of them. So I'll go one, two, three, four, and deal two damage to this guy with okay. my rapid maneuver. Okay. And then I will just roll one against him because he's got dodge. So I don't want to roll two and accidentally miss with one. Boom, there we go. Nice. All right. He's dead. Okay. So if you wanted to, you could keep moving. I remember I did my little dance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're... Okay. So you could shoot at Zurich or the earlier Granny Marauder. Should I? Well... I guess I could... Ping. I mean, I'm not getting any dice back this time. That's true. So. Okay, so, all right, fine, fine, fine. All right, all right. I'll ping Zerik a little bit to help you, because you're going to try and kill Zerik as well, right, again? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, so I deal three damage to him, and then because I hit with my snipe, I get to ignore one defense. So he takes three, and then... Would it be worth me trying to deal one more true damage to him? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and because I have the minus one to my tenacity cost, I can deal true damage to a targetable enemy equal to their defense stat for one. So there we go. Which, which one of our fans would win in the chat? Who feel better? Oh. Oh no. Feel better. better. Thank you for uh, checking in. Uh, get some rest. So someone has an idea for an enemy. Um, I think it would be cool to have a high HP enemy that loses its skills when wounded or low on health. Hmm. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, we like, definitely like, do have some high high HP enemies. We, we as we saw the other day. Yeah. Did I tell you that, Andrew? I think I did. Yeah. We, we were yeah. testing uh, yesterday, and we had. There's a the mammoth which has I think the most twelve it's got yeah. the most HP in the game I think well I think it's a Valen it's one of the gen general enemies added by Valenwood I think yeah the, the, bull, the, mammoth. the bull mammoth yeah and uh, and then we had the we did the encounter where um, you the first thing has to put to point has to be a beast and you double the beast health so we had a twenty four <laughs> HP enemy that we were dealing with uh, it's pretty funny i mean we didn't have to kill it though that was the good that's part. true we just had to protect we it had to protect it, it so actually it was also, very uh, helpful we, we, we essentially we also uh sam hadn't upgraded their necromancer skill yet so we oh. let, we let that we let it trample sam to death um so i yeah because the necromancer up can promote to master if they die with a certain number of things in their necrosis stack yeah so i maxed out my necrosis stack and then just ran up to it and was like <laughs> and it took me down um okay you are a clever girl. All right. Um, so. Oh, and just for, I, I intentionally failed this because yes, it didn't yes. matter. All right. So I won't be able to unless I take another move. Okay, so I want to go one, two. I'm going to stay right here. Then I'll get my my fatigue dice out of here. Sneak in here as we all appear to just be moving straight up. <laughs> Gonna adjust you a little oh, down. That's fair. You have more room. Let me get this beard hair out of here. <laughs> Whose hair was that? I don't know. 
Was it like a long beard hair? It was very short. A little short and curly. Oop. Okay. So I'm gonna double check my picture, make sure three <laughs> cooldown is actually what I had. Rum rum. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, no, I was supposed to have four cooldown. Oh, you oh no, I knew it. So I was like, I, uh, I, I, I like, okay. it feels, it feels like I, I should have more cool dice if I were stuck at three cooldown. Right, I'm gonna like target dice that would help me recover in other ways, but no. Okay, well, self sabotage. I'm gonna target Zerik. Um, I probably won't be able to kill him though, but I'm gonna do a bunch of other cool things. So. Oh, okay. In case, okay, it wasn't her. I double checked the photo that I took when we were doing this the other day, and I did have four cooldown. Mm -hmm. um, and I had been playing with three this whole time. Okay. Making a, the specific comment that I'm like, I feel like I would have upgraded to four. And that I didn't have enough, like, because there are skills in the game that let you recover dice. So, like, having a three cooldown can absolutely be viable if you have the other tools to facilitate it. But generally, by the time you get to end game, you probably want four cooldown. Mm -hmm. um, five, maybe six, I personally say is overkill, um, because that's six XP of dice that you can't get. Um, including some of like the best dice in the game so but that's my own personal opinion somebody will probably disagree with that uh that's just like but having three by game. the time I, at the end game that's risky <laughs> that's niche builds only probably okay um so i did miss on um, this attack entirely so but i will so i will take i will take that damage and then i will gain, gain two tenacity then Hasty prayers up. Ooh, thank uh, you. So we both heal for two. Can I have another help? Thank you. Um, then this only affects, I've got the one side that affects only level one enemies, so I can't defeat anybody with that. No. Um, and then uh, I will, what does this one do? This one is, I can't, oh yeah, because I was targeting him. So. Uh, let's just say I didn't roll that because I yeah because yeah, that that wouldn't have made it any sense. I didn't mean to roll that. That would have been dumb. It would have been dumb. You're right. Okay, so then I guess uh, I'll take um I'll take a fatigue. To roll that against the uh, Argonian Marauder? Yes. Cool, because I just realized that he's going to enfeeble uh, one of us, and uh, neither of us have the room to take that enfeeble. And then I'm also going to... Yeah, yeah I guess I'll just do that. Um... And I guess, you know, I'm also going to... I'm going to roll... Um... The those little ghost man. Oh, ghost man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, ghost man didn't work out for me. Um. But. Good question. Yes. Yeah. Love questions. For someone who has just arrived, what round are you in? We are in round, round three. three. Oh yeah. Do we want to put that in the camera? I don't know where that. Yeah, you can just set it next to the entrance. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Face it towards you though. Um. And the other question, will the stickers on the chips be matte or glossy in the final product? Matte. Yes. Matte. Matte, yes. We uh, we them. like matte now. Glossy is... We're big fans of Matthew, okay. not big fans of glossy. Glossy. Well, that's kind of rude. I mean, <laughs> I've met a few nice glossies in my... <laughs> okay. Um, but then you're susceptible to that glossy and blur. Then, 
All right, this is going to go on him, so he's going to be he's going to skip his next turn and get blinded. Um, and then he doesn't skip his next turn; he just skips his attack, right? Or does he? Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, so he'll still move to us. Mm -hmm. Then um, I'm trying to think if I should use Wayfarer or I should save up for precision, but. Um, I'll try it again. I want to use Wayfarer again. Let's see if I get a better one. Don't give me the Necronancer again, please. <laughs> no promises. Maybe Acrobat. Oh, and you can use the Master side, right? Because you're a Master Pilgrim? Uh, yeah. Oh, that is, wow, weird. Did you flip it when I wasn't looking? No. I can't read. Ooh. All right. I will immediately make a free recovery action. Oh. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh. The Necromancer was the next one. <laughs> was it? Yeah, it was the next one. So, oh okay. my gosh. Then I'm going to take a damage and take another turn. That must be so nice. And then got these back. Granted, that extra XP is probably what gave me the four cooldown. So I've, pro I've been playing at a significant disadvantage this whole game. <laughs> All right. I'm going to chuck both of these dice on Xerox now. Okay. Um, and I guess... You're at full health still. Mm, no, I could heal one more. Okay. Well, but it's not huge, so. A lot of hasty prayer in there then. And I guess that's all I need to do right now because I'm hopefully going to kill Zerg. Come on, baby. Give me a break. I cannot kill this man. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, I'll. Oh, that's right. That's not hasty prayer. That's. That is. No, it's not. It's not, oh, whoops. It should be hasty prayer. Oh, you, oh, you should you give me hasty prayer. Okay. Sorry, that was you my bad. picked the wrong dice from the get-go. I, I just did, wanted to make sure I you did. weren't just like rolling. No, no, no. And Okay, so you don't even have that die. These, these do look similar, okay? Like they're little, they're little pray, praying guys. All right. They have little praying guys. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to trigger this thing I missed on again to give myself two tests. <laughs> uh, did you want to take the damage? I'll take the damage, okay. yeah. Um, and then, then I will hasty prayer... Uh, bust both, so then I get that back. Are you able to take multiple extra turns, or just once per round you can take an extra turn? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I was meaning it for you you could take multiple, but maybe that's too good. I mean, I'd, I'd say... And then we can do one damage to him. If the cost was what I was doing, yeah, I wouldn't say it. What you're doing, though, might be too good. Yeah. If you could do it multiple. Yeah. I'm also wondering whether it's just like you can reduce your health, but you still have to die, or that you have to reduce your health stat... And you, or maybe it's like you can pick one or the other or something mm -hmm. like that, you know? Or like you reduce your health stat, but then don't need to lose the health. Yeah. Because like but per the normal rule. But anyway. This is why we test. This is why we uh, test. So, yeah. Um, we're expanding, exploring. All right. So, well. What if we just reduce Xerix's health by one? We just make that call right now. <laughs> <laughs> what if I... I mean, you've got your little sword stabbies. Yeah, combat you're right. You're right. You're right, you're right. Yeah, that. That's how you finish them off, like every time, right? You get yeah. them down to one health. All right, so I'm gonna switch to. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna switch to one-handed, or so light weapon. Come on, kill him. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like I'm gonna. But I already used Wayfarer this time. No, no, that was my last. That was, turn. That was a that separate turn. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. You gonna do it again? So. Yes, I'm gonna <laughs> use Wayfarer again because this time, even if I fail, I can still. Do the I can, I can choose to just deal damage and heal one. What are you doing again? Activating Wayfarer. 
So Wayfarer is you draw a random class sheet that's not being used, and you can trigger any of the non-interrupt or enduring abilities for, mm -hmm. for free. Granted, it costs three to trigger Wayfarer. That said, Wayfarer does have the backup, right? It says, like, you can either also, if you don't want to do anything on the skill sheet you draw, you can heal for one or deal one true damage, right? Yeah. Which is not worth three tenacity mm -hmm. in most cases. Um, but it's it's there to be like, in case you can't do anything. So it is still a little bit of a risky mm -hmm. play. Which, though, the one true damage would be enough to kill this guy. So, Right, so, here's, yeah, here's a question. This is actually, mm -hmm. so, would I have to be a magic to do this? Um, that's something that I th think... Um, I think what we'll want to do is reword Wayfair slightly. Yeah. To allow that, because uh, this was something that Michael and I were chatting about, who's our like main rules writer for this game. Mm -hmm. um, that we were chatting that if you're ever able to do a class action outside of the normal class action time, mm -hmm. you can still go through the normal process of doing a class action, which includes switching your battle form at the cost of a light fatigue before doing it. So, like, if, for example, there is a Daedric summoning die that lets you trick, like, lets you have somebody trigger a one to two cost class ability for free. In that process, if they're not in the right battle form to do one of their class abilities, they can switch at the cost of a light fatigue. I think Wayfarer should probably do the same. Otherwise, it's leaving way too much up to chance. Okay, well, should we play that way? Yes. Okay, then I'll I'll change. I'll, I'll use this now. Just I'll take a fatigue to change to magic uh, form. Okay. Oh, and you're gonna do roll, luminous, luminous shards. shards. So roll four free combat skill dice. Which I'll pass them over here. I need one more though. Um, they're not gonna look like Cloud Spire dice in the final version of this game. <laughs> uh, deal and apply the damage to all targetable enemies. Deal additional two damage to all Daedra. Mm -hmm. So, Which there are. none of those guys are targetable, this, this, though. This guy's... Well, they're not targetable, though. Oh, you're right. Because yeah. they're out of range and out of sight. So it's just going to be those two guys. Okay. Hey, I killed All him right. finally. Killed this guy, and then that guy doesn't have any defense anymore because he's... Oh, yeah. Because of this, so... Right. right. All right, so now I have uh, moved oh, this... this turn. So just... We'll probably resolve this guy's death, though, so he takes yes. over this guy instead of... <laughs> Although... Did we want him to take over that? Because that... That Due to Penumbra, that'll stay on him. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Penumbra specifically says they assume any type of status dice that are on them and whatnot. Yeah, but that, that will stay on him, but the blind thing won't. because then you, Right, then he won't get on. blind. But he'll still skip his turn. He'll only be at two health. No, I'm fine. I'll just skip no? my okay. turn. Right. Okay. All right, so I haven't moved yet. So I'm going to go one, two, three, I guess. <gasps> Sky Shard. Sky Shard. This is our... Second. One, oh, right? and we don't actually reveal a tile. Oh, yeah. Because it's a three. <laughs> so it's a three. So this is our second sky shard only, right? Yep. Okay, so we just get it. So then what happens? How do, if I want to go there, I can't go there again? Uh, right. You'd have to step back onto it. Okay, well, I'll just I'll keep. Because you were, what, here? I'll move one, two, back here. Okay. Okay. All right. So now it is a sky shard. Well, shards. enemies' turns. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, enemies' turn. Thank you. Okay, so we'll do, just do this guy first, right? He's going to go for the weakest, which is you. We can move him here or here. I think moving him here is actually better because he's... Sure. Because then yeah. that's still open. Uh, so he, he skips his turn. So you get this blind. back and he's blind, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you get that exhaust, right? Yep. Oh, so technically Zerik should have gone first because he's a quest. Oh, yeah. And then these guys... <laughs> he blocks them. And they both have Rush, which they can't even use because Zerik blocked them. Mm -hmm. oh, they're probably like... They're not happy with Zeric, I'm sure. Okay. All right, now do the end of the turn thing. Yeah, so this is interesting. So we could just kill Zeric. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, or should we just leave Zeric uh, hanging out back there? Oh, because like if we were to get rid of this, yeah. and then he wouldn't respawn because he's already in play, right? Yeah. Now, this is a potential issue with this, but let's see what happens. If we okay, should we remove pressure. this one so we can explore that again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. What do you mean issue? This is cool. Zeric's like, wait, wait, <laughs> wait where'd they go? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, your turn. It's round round four. four. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Sorry, that should be ah! here. I think. All right. Well, now I don't have my no, steel crossbow right anymore. Here. I don't even have the rat stabber bow or whatever it's called. 
Same thing. Rats. Oh yeah, you can't attack that guy. I can't attack that guy. <laughs> All right, well I guess I'll explore. I mean, I could use my two hand. I do have some two hand stuff, but that would possibly give me either a bane or a lot of life fatigue, which I don't have the luxury of taking right now. Do you ever target enemies that have just this empty space? Like, could you target somebody on one of those tiles? No. That you were not on? Okay. No. Oh, you mean target these guys? Yeah. Because you were technically like, nah, they, no, but what would, that's a good question though, because obviously they're out of sight, per the definition of sight. Yeah. But if you had something that said ignore sight restrictions, which do exist, could they be, could you get them? No, because we, we I, I think it's a policy across all of our games that we, you don't count across blank space. Like it's, No, well, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think typically, typically, the things that also ignore site restrictions. Okay. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, just want to make sure that, uh, not that this happens super often, but we'll still want to make sure we account for it. All right. So your turn. That I'm, being you know, said, though, if something said deal damage to everybody in play, that would hit them. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, it's just like across the board, deal Damage to everybody in play. Yes, yes, that yeah, would hit. Yeah, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Boop. Hey, Sky Shard. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm gonna okay. take two true damage or discard this card and draw a new one. Uh, we uh, probably well, we don't want to end the delve immediately, do we? Because we no no because we don't. <laughs> Yeah, that would be I bad. feel like this card has come up as a problem in the last three playtests. It wasn't we've a done. problem though; it's fine. It was, ah! Okay, so yeah, we should probably discard that card then. Yeah, I'm gonna discard it and draw a new one. So that doesn't count as we're getting yep. a sky shard, I think. Not a sky shard. When revealed, add a blind status die to one enemy on this dial. Okay, well, that'll be nice. All right, and there's also a lava trap. I assume we don't want to reconnect. We just want to leave them hanging. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that maybe we should have a rule where it's like Zeric, Zeric can explore. That might get a little dicey. We'll, we'll see. Maybe maybe we do something like if Zeric is isolated like he is. Yeah. He just insta kills. Like he just dies yeah. and penumbras, and then so he'd penumbra to the skeever unless you know he'd actually penumbra to this guy. And sort of like try to respawn, but if they're surrounded by enemies, maybe you can possibly uh, yeah. manipulate it so that you could get them to a number to these guys first. Maybe yeah, on Zerik's turn, on Zerik's turn, if he if there's no if connecting there's no path between him and and an adventurer, he just is defeated, yeah. which means he would put number. Well, let's let's test that. Okay, because we'll, we'll, right. we'll this is the first time that would happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is a chest, and I need a five and a one. Can you uh, can you give me the paper again? Um, let's write that down. Five red guard marauder. marauder. And... <laughs> He's got shatter. Well, guess who doesn't have any weapons anymore? A Khajiit bandit. Uh, so just as I, I'm, I'm making a lot of jokes that probably don't mean anything. Um, shatter is when you attack it. Uh, if you didn't overtax a weapon, which is sort of like you put your real heart and soul into the weapon attack so much that it breaks the weapon. Um, but it does something really good. What Shatter does is if you didn't overtax a, overtax a weapon while attacking, you have to discard a weapon. So it's essentially, it's like, if you have weapons, you should overtax them when fighting these guys. Um, but all my weapons were sent to my pack anyway. So, haha, -ha, that's how you counter Shatter. It does, yeah. Okay. Cares only about ready slots. So if something's in your back, um, you can get around it. Um, okay, so I have to add a blind status die to one enemy on this tile. Well, I should probably put it on the... Uh... Prob oh, the other guy's got range, though. But I probably still the Red Guard Marauder, right? Yeah. Have a blind... Oh, no, I have one. Blind. And what blind does is they essentially treat everybody as opposing units. Um, and if they ever attack, they can only target the strongest adjacent unit. Okay, so that was one movement, two movements. I'm going to do this trap real quick. Where are the dice? There we go. I need a two, six, two. Oh, wow. Two, 
six, and I've got two attempts. Two. Wow, oh, look, look at that. that. Boom. All right, no which lava. is good because I... Oh. I actually wouldn't have had to do anything negative because I don't have any items. Oh, so, yeah. there Sorry. we go. Okay. All right, uh, so that was one, two. Should I keep exploring or should I play it safe? I mean, we're in round four. We should. We, we yeah, have we got to get moving. We got to get moving. We got to get still. Oh, sky shard. Big tile. Okay. How many sky shards do we need to reveal? We need uh, four. Four. Yeah. This is definitely not going to be in frame, I presume. Oh, it's in frame. Like that? Sure. Because it's going to spawn three enemies, and they'll all be back there, so that's safe. Okay. Five, a five, one, and a ten. Five is the Imperial Marauder. Okay, and this will be our third Sky Shard that we have gained, right? Yes. <gasps> Healed a full and gained five tenacity when I move in there. Whoa. Yes. A one, Some good luck. The Spriggan. And a ten. The Wraith of Crows. The Wraith of Crows. It's murder out here. All right, so one, two, three. Four. I get to heal the full, which I think I'm at now. Yeah, I'm at. But I get all this tenacity, which is very lovely. Um, okay. I think... Hmm. That guy's got elusive, so I can't even... Okay, well, I, I think I'm going to go for the Spriggan because I do not want poison. I want to avoid poison at all costs. All right, so I'm going to target the Spriggan. There. Okay. Uh, that's going to be two damage to it. Four damage to it. I'm actually going to re-roll this one, because that's all I need, and I have a better chance of getting a hit. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's going to be five damage to that guy. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll resolve those. Five damage to this guy, and then I'm going to... So I'll just exhaust those for right now, and then I'm going to resolve this, which is I get to pick three targetable enemies and roll two d6s, and for each that I get a seven or higher, I get to bane them. Well, I'll definitely do the Wraith of Crows. Yes, okay. Bane. I'll do the Imperial Marauder. Okay, don't get that one. And then because I can't target this guy because he's next to me. Uh, well, I could do that guy. No, that guy. No, no. You, you can't. He's not out, out of sight. Oh, you're right. I'm on this tile. Yep. Uh, so then the Khajiit Bandit. Okay, Khajiit Bandit's Bane. Okay. All right. Two out of three ain't bad. All right. Wait, isn't this our fourth one because we... Because we... We're gonna... Oh, we didn't... Oh, right, because we didn't set that card aside. Yeah. Which we were supposed to do. This is our fourth one. This is our fourth one. You're right. Okay. Um, well, okay. you might want to move then so that I can get in there. <laughs> or you can move back. Uh, well, I'd have to take another turn to do that. I know. But, I mean, we just need to, we need to end around and survive. Oh, like, yeah. right, right. So we all got to be in there. Okay, that's worth it. And I still have my Arngronian resistance, so if I get damaged really nastily, I think I'll be okay. Um, I will drain this one. Okay. And then, actually, no, I'm going to drain this one because I feel like I'm not going to get my bow stuff back for a while. So I'll have these just in case. Two. Oh, and then i got to do my cooldown. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother with the chests. Okay. Um. 
and then I'll roll these. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. Okay. Go one, two, three, four. Um, then I guess I'll go. Oh, I got my dice back, of course. Oh, you could just always do a second move action. I know. I know. I know. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think though. Um, I'm not going to do a second move action yet. I'm going to. Uh, let's see. I'm going to roll my two kind of like ghostly. Um, Your spooky dice. Yeah, my spooky dice. Your Halloween dice. And um, I will roll those. Magic form. They all both of them, of course. <laughs> Great. You're rolling like I do. Yeah. Uh, and then. Um, I will take a damage to move again. So you can take another take turn. Another mm -hmm. Yeah, that's too good. <laughs> it's just too good. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Um, and then I'm gonna roll like especially if you were the healer. So the healer gets to just heal at the start of their turn. Mm -hmm. And if all they had to do was take they take one damage but then yeah, heal for yeah. two each turn, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Healers are broken. Okay. Then <laughs> So how about instead of healing, it damages people instead. But them okay. specifically. They just anti heal. Okay. All right, what we got here? I failed on my thing again. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, I guess I'll take that tenace, and then I will. Um, Okay, um, then I will, yeah, there's no way I can really get to from that guy, but um, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll put this here, because why not, and then um, I put this on him. So his range and movement are reduced to one. Oh, I'd be able to do that with my class ability too, if need be. Um, Which I could be, I could reduce his range to zero then, or his his movement to zero. Mm -hmm. Then um, I will. Uh, yeah, I guess then I'll defeat this guy with this, and. Do we have to take damage equal to the? Yeah, we do. All right. I think we, well, yeah, we just split it between us, but, uh, but but then we're not going to get a target at this time by doing that. So yeah, I'll take I'll take three. Okay. If you want to take two? Yep. I've got my Argonian resistance if worst case scenario. Then that's it. Um, okay. So then enemy's turns, right? Enemy's turns. So okay. I actually changed Derek so that it's like he he if if he if he can't if he's no path then he will immediately be defeated. And they take another turn. That's actually exactly what I was going to suggest because then if you, because while this could be kind of funny, yeah, it, it would just be way too good. Yeah. Whereas now it's sort of like now the strategy is keep people low health away yeah. from you. 
Yeah. So that he jumps to them. So it's a go here? Yep. He will be blind, ironically, though. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> uh, he assumes their health. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Sorry. Pretty much, yep. Just replace it. What? Are you, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. All right. Then he'll go. And then he takes a turn and he goes for this guy. One, Aha. two, and he attacks that guy. Um, oh, I didn't think about that. Why is that bad? Well, it might be bad for me. But okay. Okay. Then he would no. The, the ten would go. Oh, ten. But he can only move one space. Uh, no, he can't move any spaces. Ooh, okay, but take take me damage. Okay, then this guy would go. So he's blind, so he would go over to we're we're even away, and we're also both have the same amount of health. So we'll we'll see. He goes over to old Zerk yeah, and, oh, and wow. kills him. Him. Okay, then those guys just those chill. Guys chill. All so right. So we would drop. We drop one of these. Yep. We won. And we won. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, what time is it? Uh, it is one thirty. Okay. So, what do we think? And now, I want to say too, just like uh, I hate. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this this one is not supposed to be anticlimactic, and I don't think it was. I no. think I, I think that there's there's definitely like a cool baseline of what this is, and we can we can mess with it, but. Mm -hmm. Like this, this one, the Mara one, Morrowind one. The second step is supposed to be like the you know, climax, yeah, like the like, big know, fight. You're which, fighting Mother Brain in the second step, and you're escaping. You're escaping from, the planet, from yeah. Planet in this, in this um, uh, so there, there is like a, a unique, interesting kind of variable, uh, mm -hmm. like kind of really climactic, like brrr, attack fight in the in the second in the second step. So, or that's what we want it to be like. Yep. Anyway, um, so yeah, keeping that in mind, like what you what you think of this? Yeah, I think I think the big things that we sort of already touched base on, um, for example, like trapping Zeric, mm -hmm. we probably don't want that to be possible, or at right, the very right, least, yeah. maybe a keyword could help you with that. I liked that though. Um, I liked I liked, I liked what him, we do with that. Yes, where he, because it still gives you that strategy of if you did trap him, yeah, then you don't need to worry about killing him again, and you could instead then he just goes for the weakest. So if we explored like this, yeah, that guy, yeah. and then we we. Put in a lot of safe distance mm -hmm. that effectively did the same thing as this, but required a little bit more intentionality to it. Yeah, which I think is good. Um, I think you're just taking damage to take an extra turn, and if that's just some limited yeah. times, especially for the healer, like I if think, we had a healer, that'd just be way too good. I think maybe making it so that it's like you still have to reduce and and drain a die, but maybe it's or yeah, yeah or or. Uh, Cause that still feels yeah like yeah costly. yeah I think something along those lines I think we can hone that in um, I think our keyword absolutely helped us in the first few steps of the delve mm -hmm. um, and I don't want but like once we got going I don't think it helped us too much like I think we would have been fine that said really that said we would have lost without it at, from the start. Um, well, we wouldn't have lost, but we would have had to take extra turns. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. We would have had to do the extra that's turns. Why, that's why that's yes. built in. Yes, so yes, you, yes. You, you, yep. You're not just going to like be like, well, I guess we're stuck here. Yeah, like, exactly. Good point. Um, um, and I don't want to bring that up as in like, oh, the keyword stopped helping us at a certain point. But it's rather just like... No, I don't know if I agree with like, that. I, I, feel like, I feel like the keyword was quite good. Like, I mean... You don't think so? Like, like, well, it's... Like, so, like, what was it? We were, we were on round four it, or five. We, we, yeah, we it's, it's more so the level of like... When I say it stopped helping us, that's not me trying to say like, oh, it was a bad keyword. It was more so like, I think the point of that keyword is to help you at the start, help sure. you get going, so sure. you don't have to take a bunch of extra turns, which is where it was the most significant. Whereas at the end, if we had to remove two, like we would have just removed that, and that went to hurt us. But think about so, but it's it's cumulative. So, mm -hmm. like this is what was round four, round five that we finished. Round four, end of round four. So. These are all gone. Like that's does like like uh, wait. So we would have had to keep because it, because it's one per it's it, it's one extra per round. It's one per round plus the plus plus the number of sky shards you you remove. Yeah, one plus discovered. Sky I, shards. I 
per the round though i thought it, i thought it was how many sky shards you discovered that round it's that it's the number of sky shards you discovered that round plus one plus one yeah so if there's zero then it's one oh right okay that's i think i okay so if you didn't discover any sky shards you're you're constantly removing one yes you're always removing i at see least okay one per round so I think that was I, okay. I, never I, mind. I never that mind. That's that, okay. A big help. Now that we I have, we would just have this guy like this if, if we <laughs> yes, had a that, keyword. This is the only place to have been out. Like uh, you know. So I think that's a gotcha. Okay. I think what threw me yeah. off was the fact that I was because we had that keyword. Yeah. I was constantly thinking like, oh, it's only tied to us discovering sky shards. So mm -hmm. all those turns we didn't discover any, nothing would have happened. Right. The, the reason nothing happened no, is no, because no. we had that keyword. Right. Right. Okay. So I think that's makes a, a lot more sense. Never mind. Thank you for yeah. spelling that out for me. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love Zerik. Zerik's probably. Uh, I'm a big fan of that enemy. I like. Uh, is there an eliminate Zerik keyword? And if so, what would happen? Because uh, I know for a fact there is, there is... and Zerik is eliminated. So he just never, never yeah. responds. And Whoa, that, that would yeah, I, uh, that would make it easier. Hopefully not too anticlimactic. Well, but again, like but, you know, you like I know the key. We want the keywords to feel like impactful for what you did. So yes, mm -hmm. I don't want to suggest that. Haha, you didn't. You thought you killed Zero, even though if there's any enemy that that would work on, it's this guy. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want us to do that. But like, if it's something like, I don't know, first time Zerik was bond, you just deploy a somebody else. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Just a thought. Or you replace um, him with like a a dark. A dark elf marauder or something. Yeah, like um, and maybe only even the first time, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's sort of just a lackey that Deslandra roped in for yeah. last minute security because her one of her top agents was dead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some voroplasm. Some just not just a voroplasm sitting there like, ah, do you have a badge? <laughs> yeah, just so going through the other ones that affect this one anyway. Mm -hmm. We can go through all of them actually, honestly. So, the first one where you are, where you, the first, the, the non combat one where you're uh, choosing which thing you want to get. Um, block operative, which also has to do with Zerik, but it's, it's other things too. So, it's if, if, if selecting uh, like the gain XP option or the gain health option, you add one to those amounts. Okay. Um, gain notoriety, you get to pick two different options. Um, you see the other one over there? Um, nothing else for that one. Then for the second step, like the big dungeon battle step. Uh, oh, we can talk about this obliquely and people will be like, what are they talking about? Um, Good. So, um, we did the one that gives you an ally then, which would which will let you carry through if, as long as he didn't die. And he did. Which he did. RIP, Raz. Um, then there's also, so then block operative is, basically this one, it doesn't do anything unless you also have a limited agent, which also affects Xeric. So it's, if you have a limited agent also, you choose which peaceful encounter deck to use and which general peaceful encounter cards to shuffle in. Oh, for the step two thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because there's, we we're we're in this in this encounter currently. You use uh, the encounter the the peaceful encounter symbols to trigger different unique abilities of like this kind of monster that appears in this yeah. in this dungeon. So, um, the destroy equipment uh, lets you ignore burn as a skill, which is on that big monster. Which is pretty yeah, nasty. And can scale be used too. and can be even added to more yep. enemies with the thing. Um, the disrupt operation, you remove the left arm or the uh, the yeah the right arm. Sorry. Well, we're given hints um, as to what kind of monster this yep. is. The, it's got arms. Yep. The, the <laughs> obtain artifact. Um, you put a Keisha. You don't you don't include a Keisha. Mm -hmm. um, and because that's the one where you would normally interrupt her, right? That's where that one's. Yeah. From. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Um, and the Ruin Experiment, you remove the left arm. Oh. So you have the Ruin Experiment and... Uh, it's just an armless it's just, it's just an torso. Armless thing. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and so when the last one, the one we just did, there was... Uh, so Block Operative is like... So after the first time Zerk is defeated, he will not redeploy. Um, but it has to be... So that I think that one would just need to get clarified. Because uh, Penumbra technically triggers when he's defeated. Sure. So is that more so just like when he's completely removed, like you wouldn't have to deploy him again? Mm, that's a good point. Well, just want to make sure that's clarified because yeah. Penumbra specifically is like when this unit's defeated. Cannot use Penumbra. Oh, so do, oh, so you're thinking that you just have to kill him once, regardless of Penumbra, yeah, yeah. not you have to make sure he has no one to Penumbra too. 
before he's gone for good? Does that make sense? What yeah, I'm asking? Yeah, I'm saying like the first time he is defeated and cannot use penumbra. So like okay. He, yeah, and then and that's 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 a good note. And then element agent is just like he doesn't exist. He doesn't mm -hmm. pop up at all. Um, intercept intelligence is uh, ignore ignore all delve trap text and dark elf patrol cards. Okay. Um, and Which then, we'll want to just make a take a look at the or maybe, or maybe like remove them or something. Yeah, yeah. Because I will say that like it did make the delve go longer having to draw that one out because it's like another it's it's it, there's more sky shards that you're not running into. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and then we did the recovery agent one, which is the one where it uh, when capital number of delve tiles removed to remove each round, subtract one from the total. So. Mm -hmm. Which I do think was. Yeah, and now that you re-explained to me yeah. what was happening, like I, I was just thinking, like, oh, every time we had removed tiles, we would have just removed two, rather than it being like all of those times. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um. So, we t we we think for this one, like, yeah, we definitely making the 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 Zeric move. Yep. And then I would say, yeah, like altering the 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 thing so that if you if you review the maps, then you can mm -hmm. uh, you have to choose either or rather than just losing a health. Because I agree with you, that was that was way too good. <laughs> that was like better than some of the keywords. I mean, that's it, <laughs> like some of the also better than uh, like the orcs ability to do that. Sure, you sure. just get to laugh at all the orcs who are like, oh, I can only do that once per battle, yeah. and I have to take an over fatigue. Yeah, yeah. So. This way, it still feels like a meaningful sacrifice you're making, yeah. just not as bad. Yeah. Um, what if you just changed it to instead of one damage, you take six free damage? <laughs> Beautiful. Six. I love it. Um, it would also make healers really good because they just yeah. like make sure they have the revive dead people and <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything? Any other like big notes? I don't think so. Um, I'd be curious to try it again doing I know like we did do steps one and two before, but it's been a Yeah. You know. You normally we normally wouldn't have this much of a gap between those. Yeah. So I think it would be curious to try it again in like the true end game fashion where we do like a full rush and we we do all the steps, especially with all the changes we made to two, mm -hmm. step two last time. Like we upped what is Deslandra's defense like four now or yeah, something? Yeah. Which highest defense Deslandra in the game I think is this one, but she mm -hmm. loads very low damage. Yes. So it's a level of like, ooh, do you keep her alive because she's not dealing much damage, but she's got these huge support skills? Mm -hmm. Or do you take her out, try to cut through that defense? Um, I would say for context for people who have watched this, is this the last part of a third session? This was would. This, an entire third this is the last part of a third session. This was the last part of a third session. There were two other parts we had done prior to this stream, so yeah. we were just sort of picking up, um, which we recognize is a bit weird as far as like entertainment streaming the game kind of content goes. But that's why we want to make sure. We're working here. We got. Yeah, we wanted to make sure to preface this yeah. like, okay, <laughs> we're essentially live streaming what we would be doing if we weren't live streaming. Live yeah. streaming work. We are live streaming work. Yeah. I also, I'm sure people did notice we really didn't use very many of the items, and we did some of our items I, were forced into our packs. I mean, uh, I used I, that one, and I was using the steel crossbow. I mean, I was using my glyph of stamina every yeah, time. We were like, using, yeah. yeah. But, but that, uh, that's the other thing too. There's because there's a difference in different item types. There yes. are item types that are like big and flashy because they are oh, I'm using this now, and you like put it down. That would include any of the miscellaneouses, any of the potions and consumables are kind of like mm -hmm. you declare whoa you did this thing whereas two of my items were weapons which were just yeah. passively buffing my attacks mm -hmm. so i wasn't necessarily making a big grand statement each time i was using my crossbow because i was just That's using true. my crossbow um same with your glyph of stamina you were already enchanted so you were just using the glyph of stamina um yeah, which, and again, that just goes goes to the nature of, like, we recognize that the game doesn't always, it's a different experience playing the game than it is watching the game, yeah. um, especially if it's still relatively, like, not sure how things are working or what's going on, and if the people doing it aren't fully, fully explaining everything that's going on, which, again, part of the reason why we're not doing that is because we're also just streaming us working kind of thing. Yeah. So this is it's a quarter to two. I think... So I think uh, our boss wants to ask me some questions about something before I go today. <laughs> so you're going to blame it on him. No, no, no. And 
<laughs> so I think rather than I also have to take a five hour car drive after work today. So uh, let's that's not your cut, daily let's, commute. Let's right? not yeah. drive five hours to and from work. Uh, I do drive about an hour sometimes, depending on traffic, but <laughs> not five hours. I ride an hour and a half bus. Um, oh. <laughs> well, so I was going to say, so I don't think we should do another uh, end game session, but if we could answer some questions for a bit, I think. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, shoot them into the old chat right now, plop them right there, and we'll we'll pick them up and answer them. Um, I wanted to let you know there is new Burger King Halloween items. There's ghost pepper chicken fries. That's pretty exciting. The <laughs> chicken fries are not good. You're wrong. Um, but here is a question from our chat. In terms of keywords, yeah. are you aiming to keep the final fight, I'm assuming final fight, keeping the fight doable if you are missing one or two of them? Um, uh, so it's going to be tough to balance if you do want them to have a big impact, I imagine. Yeah, so uh, I'll just say it. it is impossible to reach the end game without at least one. Yeah. Um, the way you can reach it with only one, however, is so part of that guild assist that I mentioned, which is like the whole, if you're about to lose and you would otherwise lose the campaign, you can call upon the guild to rush in to your aid, give you a huge boost to help you win that session. However, it's a once per campaign. And when you do it, you give up whatever keyword that quest was going to give you. Since it's only once per campaign, you can't use it twice, which means yeah. you can't get to the end game with only one key or excuse me, only two keywords. Because if you were to fail a second time, you would fail. Yep. Um, that said, the reason why that guild assist is so powerful and so big is, I mean, part of the cost is you're giving up a keyword. Mm -hmm. So the hope is that that guild assist would never be used as just a, well, let's just make this easier and use it. It's only really to be used a, we were going to lose anyway. Let's do this. And then that buff that it gives you is sort of not only a way to try and get through whatever quest step you were struggling with, but also like as a way to be like, okay, now use that buff, be more aggressive, go get a lot more XP because you are going to be at a disadvantage in the end game, mm -hmm. having only one keyword. That's kind of the design philosophy of it. Um, there's also the level of like, if you were hypothetically, able to get to the end game with no keywords, mm -hmm. it would be near impossible. But since that's not an actual probability, we're not like balancing for that. Like if there is somebody out there who tries and still wins, like just by house ruling, I'm gonna try the end game with no keywords mm -hmm. and they win. Awesome, cool, right on. That's not something that could legally happen per the rules of the game. Yeah. But what we wanna make sure is that when you play, if you have one only one keyword, you're gonna be sitting there being like, oh my gosh, that was a struggle. Hopefully next time we won't need to use the guild assist or next time we use the guild assist, we got to make sure to pick up the slack because we have to account for that. Um, and then if you have two keywords, it's still hard, but that you get to look at those keywords and like lean on those keywords is almost kind of what I'm envisioning where it's like, okay, those are the avenues we can exploit to win this end game. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Imagine if you have all of the keywords, it's going to be much like me placing Elder Scrolls where I just sort of over yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> if you ever if you ever want to feel uh really powerful house rule and give yourself every keyword <laughs> there are some where that it would be it would actually be sort of contradictory, contradictory yeah yeah because yeah. another thing too is like which allies you have yeah because the keywords um are tied to the quests and when you complete a quest it tells you which quests you can then move on to yep um, so it's not like a, hey, quest one, pick any. Quest two, pick any. They It it will guide you to be like, all right, you did this we, one. We can't stop you from doing that, but we were We can't stop you, you from not doing that. But, um, <laughs> and so reasons. because of that, we will have like quantifiable knowledge of every possible keyword combination somebody could have. Because, yeah. you know, if we look at Black Marsh and we know, well, quest two had to be in Black Marsh. So... What are the ones? And then what are the quests that could have led into that quest too? Right. So there's sometimes uh, where like maybe you get a quest unit that can be an ally, but then also in some of the end games you might have to fight that one. And so mm -hmm. we're like, okay, well we'll just make sure that like the the quest where you get that character as an ally does not lead into the same region where you would have to fight yeah. <laughs> fight that person. And so. that kind of goes into like the whole idea that Des Lantra, she's going around and trying to gain allies and forces. And so some of your quests involve 
being on the right being at the right place at the right time to stop somebody from falling victim to her or helping somebody out more so that they will show more loyalty to you than Deslandra. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, yeah, you could get this person. Now this person's an ally, but in a different campaign where you didn't do those quests and you go to a different end game, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the universe. This is the timeline where that person got yeah. swayed. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, any other questions? Uh, no, uh, nothing coming in uh, as as a person who uh, has a question, yeah. you have a question. I have a question. Whoa. I remember playtesting Valen, or you know, I was demoing Valenwood in mm -hmm. Essen for people um, who liked it. It's good. It's mm. generally received. Yay! And not generally. It's just received very well. Good, good. Um, but someone was forced to slap our oh, yeah. friend, <laughs> our friend, our friend Questicles, um, <laughs> now renamed. Arvin. This is really inside baseball. No one knows what Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is all. So what is your question? Um, they were given the keyword rude. Uh, yes. Yep. What does keyword rude do? So uh, there yeah. are what I've been. What does keyword rude do? I actually don't know. <laughs> uh, so, or is it just funny? Uh, I mean, there's a part of me that wants to have it do nothing, and it's just funny. But uh, so there are what I've been calling miscellaneous keywords. I don't think that's any kind of official term. Mm -hmm. It's just most of the primary keywords are gained from the main quests. So recover reagent, for example. You'll only ever get that from a mainline quest. However, there are a few, and I, well, once again, I'm just calling them miscellaneous keywords because they're not tied to the main quests, but they're still yeah. keywords in all the sense of the word. The only difference is you get them outside of regular main quests, and they do not guarantee something in the end game. So for example, the uh, one that Andrew was referring to is in Valenwood, there's this reoccurring character that sort of just keeps popping up in encounters and he's kind of a bit of a comedic figure. And there is an encounter where you can slap him. And we just thought it would be really funny. And well, it's also you if you if you if you go to if you get that encounter on an unstable air, you're mark, forced you're to, forced slap, to him. Yeah. slap him. And you get a keyword called rude. And our day in the keyword root. Day in the keyword root. And our idea is that in the Valenwood endgame, that rude keyword could have an effect. Um, you might run into that guy in the endgame. He's end like, game. Oh, yeah. man, I remember you slapped me. Like, you slapped me. That's very rude. Yeah. Uh, he's now the leader of an army. Yeah. He's an additional <laughs> six 20 points. Yeah. Uh, to give a more serious example of that, uh, there are some side quests that might. For example, one is that you are tasked with dealing with one of the, uh, I think it's like the Turnian is how it's pronounced or something like that. Yeah. Um, Turnian monks, who are like these old school monks that base sort of primarily from the Nords and Skyrim. Yeah. And there's a side quest that. that <laughs> we have to change this one, by the oh, way. Oh, we might have to change this one. Reasons. Oh, okay. Come on. Yeah. It's, it's might it's change, fine. but I'm going to continue as if it doesn't. Yeah. But you're asked to sort of be like, hey, go go get rid of these guys you know they're they're causing issues go go stop them and you can choose to like maybe bribe them to leave like or trick them into leaving or you can threaten them if you have like a lot of combat stuff there's different ways you can resolve the issue but then there's one that you can really only do if you have a nord in your party or you're in skyrim because it's so it's like setting the mood as like hey you're in skyrim you understand you understand like this guy where this guy's coming from mm -hmm. He can actually like kind of vibe with you. Same with if you're a Nord, he's like, "Hey, I know what you're talking about," you know. Yeah. Uh, and you would gain then a keyword, Turnian's blessing. You wouldn't gain the other things that are printed on there. So the way is kind of being like, you're giving up instant rewards for this keyword. That being said, you can't 100% guarantee that keyword's even going to help you because if you're in Skyrim and you get it, it'll probably help you. That would thematically make sense. But if you leave Skyrim and you go to like. Valenwood or yeah. elsewhere or somewhere in an expansion content. How did you get to elsewhere? That's game that we haven't ah, made that one yeah. yet. But like where that that sort of religion doesn't have nearly as much of a presence and so this blessing that he's giving you isn't really gonna help. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the specific example of what that keyword does, is it it's it, these are never gonna be as big as the main keywords. So Turnian's blessing currently is if you're in like, I think it's like uh, I can't remember the exact player count and which one you get for what, but you either get a wolf or a bear companion. And they're like an ally for the end game, which they're just a level one or a level five. So they're never going to be as good as like a gain ally keyword that gives yeah. you 
like a specific tailor-made quest unit as an ally. You just get this like nice little guy, but it's a nice little thing. Mm -hmm. Could help you out. Um, that's kind of what the additional keywords can give you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, um, anything else? Andrew, do you have any more questions for us? You do. Give us all the questions. Let's just no. air out all of this dirty laundry. Yeah. Why are you the way you are? <laughs> that's, oh, that's a question I ask myself every day. No, um, that's that's it for me. Um, again, if you liked this, uh, let us know. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to see more playtesting in, in, in Media Res live as we do it, we can do our jobs on camera. That's fine. Yeah, and I would, I would say too, like, not that we'll necessarily like take requests in such a specific way, but like if there are things where you're like, oh, that'd be kind of fun to see, you know, this being play tester or whatever, let us know and we can mm -hmm. at least take that into consideration. Because we yeah. do have some certain things well, we need to play test, but like, you know, there's we have some flexibility there. So we'll let people know what's on the docket. What's yeah. uh, what is stuff that we're play testing that they uh, can even choose from. Right now we're doing a bunch of Black Marsh stuff. Because we're we're revisiting Black Marsh after mm -hmm. the we're sort of after the waves of playtesting and now with end games getting added to it, we're kind of like re-going through Black Marsh before we send it out in the final wave. Yeah. Um, I know to anybody who's been following this campaign from the beginning and from the get-go is probably a little tired of Black Marsh because that's mm -hmm. all we showed off for the longest time. Well, we got um, some high rock coming up soon. Ooh, though, too. yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. Um, we'll talk about that actually yeah. off screen. But Which, yeah, that's some... not disparaging Black Marsh. Black Marsh is a great region and it's perfect yes. for people's first regions, yeah. especially. I've demoed. Uh, with so many people in Black Marsh, and yeah. it's, it's still fine. It's still yeah, fun. it's just uh, it's just I've that. seen so much of it that I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, but yeah, we got Hyrule like, coming up soon. We got some end games as well. Yeah. like we you know like again like if we had, had time today, we would have gone into the Vale End Game or I think. or Serial because that's yeah, the only one I had printed. Yeah, yep. So we got that too. So yeah, let yep. us know what sounds uh, interesting, and even you know like, you know uh, when we're playing like regular quests, like we can. You know, you could even say like, "Oh, I want to see what this class plays like," or mm -hmm. whatever, and we can mm -hmm. try to accommodate that a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. if you want yeah. to see some of the sillier skill lines, see mm -hmm. how they work out. What yeah. would you say is a silly skill line? Uh, someone just fully going into speech. Speech, be, yeah. Be I mean, speech, fully trained out speech, is it's good, but the dice drain. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. So it's like it's it's tricky, but mm -hmm. oh my gosh, can it be nasty? Like you mm -hmm. can just. Talk everyone out of fire. Yeah, if, even if you just get three of that one die, you're just like, oh, hi, 20 pointer. You don't want to be here. You want to leave. And they're like, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Illusion is kind of a goofy one, too. I didn't really get to show that off because I kept on rolling fails on so many of them mm -hmm. this time. But yeah, Illusion's yeah. got some really cool stuff in it. Uh, yeah, that's another kind of cool. more off the wall one. So. Yeah. Also, just in general, let us know whatever you want to see. Yeah. Um, Probably going to try and do some burn cycle eventually. Whoa, here. yes. Because yeah, we got a new burn cycle. That's right. Yeah. I get to play Torrent again. Yeah. My favorite. Okay, well, should I say goodbye? Is that, is, are, we, <laughs> are we, are you going to be able to turn ask, it off? Ask yourself that. Okay. Well, uh, this was really fun. Season. It was fun. We thank, hoped you liked it too. Yeah, thank you everybody Seems for Seems like watching. we've just begun, but oh, suddenly doing, we're through. You're doing a bit. <laughs> is this is this actionable? Uh, or, are we gonna get demonetized? Bear like, in the big blue house is gonna come for us. It's like that uh, the dark episode where he has to sing "Uptown Girl" out of key. So <laughs> uh, someone has said Ooh. they would prefer a new design of chips with bigger pictures of enemies. Uh, oh yeah, well, no, I hear you, but uh, I don't know if we have bigger pictures of enemies. We are uh, tweaking the, the UX a yeah. little bit so that the information on the chips is clear it is a difficult thing like that is yeah. something we are chip theory games we have chips we even yep. even our card game has a chip like yeah and it's so, and what if we just make the chips like really in big? like yeah. coasters yeah. uh yeah because like, there's always the sucks, but... there's always the notion like first of all I, I just want to say like yeah i know what you're saying um but i will say it here i want to cut you off real quick there's an art book for this game Ooh, yes. there is an art book. size pieces yes. of art with other stuff in it i think yeah is what I've um that's, I, I met with our artists in Germany. So, because uh, now don't get me wrong, there's a part of me that I think r would really love at some point for us to do a little bit more simpler of a game where units and enemies don't really have crazy skills in the way that we do them here. Like where, almost like where everybody has a full art chip mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, 
that said, I think just because like the enemies, I mean, first of all, like that's just core to this the game is that these enemies have these dynamic skills, dynamic stats, all those things, and that's information that just needs to be on the chip. Yeah. Um, we are not really interested in doing things where it's like, like you have just you just have the chip, and it tells you what enemy it is, but for all of the relevant information, you need to look at like a guidebook or you need to look at something else. Like, yes, the skills technically, you need to look at a reference sheet to know what those do, but a lot of the skills, it's pretty easy to start to be like, okay, I know what those do at this point. Um, so that's that's the thing. They need information on them. They need the information that makes them interesting, that makes them dynamic, um, and that needs to take up space. And yes, there somebody could then comment being like, then you know, stop using chips. And I think that's just ultimately like we like chips. Yeah. We think chips feel Sorry. good. We, they thing. feel cool. It's our thing. All those aspects, and it's not something I would ever think that it's like I want every game out there to do chips. No, well, and like other game companies don't do chips, and I'm like, cool, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's it's something we like. We think it's fun. We love the tactile feel of chips. We love the stacking of the chips. Uh, and, there's a lot of you know stuff and, to do. And I think actually like the the chips serve this game just fine. Like, yeah. like 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 I said, it's like we have to have these enemy skills in this thing. This is a fine place to put them. I think if you're you know obviously if you do get uh, if you do get twenty strong, like there's one chip in there, and we figured out a good use for it. But like kind of. We added it in sort of at the last minute because everyone was like, where's the chip? Like, they were like, okay, well, if we're going to put a chip in this game, what should we use it for? Let's use it for something good. And we figured out a really good use for it. Mm -hmm. I think we'll actually expand the design space of 20 Strong significantly in the future and already is being used quite a bit in the yeah. three decks that we came out with. But, um, you know, not a super chip heavy game. I think Roth, the same thing. Like, I, I'm sure, I'm sure Roth will have some kind of chip component, but I have play tested it, Roth a few times and it doesn't. Right uh, now, right? So uh, that was something Manny confirmed. With me, uh, oh, oh, that was the most exciting thing is a an eight sided die. Yeah, um, he did say there was a chip uh, that I think actually served something beyond just like first player marker. Mm -hmm. Though that is also probably going to be a chip, you know. So like, um, but not, I can't a, not a super chip heavy game. No, we, definitely we, not chip heavy. We, game. we don't want to just be bound by that. Yeah. But in this case, I think it actually does serve the game quite well. So it, even even though I think we would all like to see like Federico and Anthony's art like blown up bigger because oh, it is yeah, it's so great. Good. It's beautiful. Uh, but um, you know, you'll be able to see it in the rule books, and you'll be able to see it on these and other places. The art book. Yeah. Um, sorry to keep popping in, but no, I keep popping I'm in. The, I'm the arbiter for comments. Uh, same person has replied with, um, could we do something where we are overlaying the text over full art? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, as a person who makes a lot of you know, our post images and has to wrangle fonts onto images, it, that's no good. Yeah, <laughs> that I, does not I, work. It's not readable for a lot of people. There's some situations where that could, but I think just the size of the chips, the different colors, the art. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, the thing that is most important is people can understand. Yeah. What they're looking at. Yeah, so. we, yeah, we want we don't want it to ever be uh, difficult to try and read the information and mm -hmm. see the information. I think that absolutely could work for a certain type of game. Like there could be games where yeah. we do do we do have more full art chips, and it's more reliant on just like just a few icons that indicate what the chip does. And yeah. that is overlaying the thing or something like that. Um, but I think just due to the nature of how much information is on these chips and how much is needed to be sort of like readily visible and readily apparent, um, ultimately, you know, it just needs that real estate. It needs that graphic design that lets it pop, lets it be visible, those kinds of things. I would say um, the best course of action for you is to write your local congressperson asking them to uh, have in 20 strong Elder Scrolls mains so that you can have bigger pieces of art on cards. <laughs> we can do Victorian style maybe with a big piece of art on the back. So why did you say yeah. con Congress? Yeah, yeah. Write, <laughs> write your local congressperson. Um, make sure that they're aware that you don't like how small the art is on, yeah. on your chip theory game. Um, uh, but at the very least, I mean... Yeah, like we uh, we do love the art, and so it would be cool to see. And that's, I think, ultimately why we kind of really wanted to do an art book for this. Yeah. Was there's that, like, oh, this is not only cool art from Anthony and Federico that we really like, 
but this is like Elder Scrolls too. So it's like this is a way to see characters and enemies that people have seen in, in the way. games yeah. in a totally new way. Yeah. Um, but it, you, but you're right. It's like something we think about a lot. I mean, and, and honestly, that's one of the reasons why we did Twenty Strong the way we yeah. did. Yeah. Oh yes. There's a chance like, to we show like, off the yeah, art in a new way. Like, this is yep. cool stuff that has been previously confined to a chip space. You know, in the case of of the Too Many Bones deck, like a lot of it had only been in black and white before. Mm -hmm. We had we had you oh, know, yeah, Anthony go back and recolor all oh, of this stuff. And they're so interesting. Like, so yeah, it is something we think about. It's totally valid. But yeah, I it ultimately the game has to make sense. Like, and then the art. Is an important part of that, but like mm -hmm. we have to, you have to be able to read that stuff. You have to be able to see all the information. So yep. yeah, yeah. Um, this is a good comment. Fallout twenty strong. Fallout twenty strong. Fallout 20 oh, strong. I would. <laughs> I, I, I would. Yeah, I would love write, that. Write your local Bethesda, um, um, Maryland, Virginia. Or, or but I, I think who I. I can't remember who said it, but I remember it was in response to somebody asking, like, oh, what's the next IP that you guys are going to pursue? And someone just said, I will finish this one first. Like, yeah. <laughs> before. Let's, Which, I agree. agreed, agreed. Yeah. Um, this is a big game. It's a very uh, big we've game. We've talked about it before, but it's a very, very big game. And so, so what was it? Two, the number of encounters is like two thirds all of Bones or something like that? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, comments. Woo. Uh, I just have one question. Yeah. One question. Mm -hmm. um, this game has so much content. Is yeah. it all going to get play tested and balanced enough? That's the hope. I'm a min maxer. I'm afraid that with too much content, too little time to play test everything enough, the game might put me off a bit. So, uh, I mean, we, you can jump into on this, mm -hmm. but so we've been we've been testing it in various forms for over a year yeah like, i would say like the the we have had like pretty serious hardcore like external testing since june mm -hmm. june um and we've done some stuff in, in house and out out before before that as well um you're right it's a lot of stuff like um one of the things and, and honestly like one of the things we're doing right now with the quest is basically making sure that everything has been touched and has been touched by us so that we are like yep this is acting the way it's supposed to mm -hmm. you know because we also have like the people on external play oh sorry you're, not you're, to interrupt you're, you're. yeah but uh just the people on uh, external play testing doing a lot of like um you know uh, I, I don't know the right word for it but like more just like we got a lot of people and we let them loose you know uh, like go, blast, yeah, you know. know just go play test things and I'll, I'll so often they'll come back to us and they'll find a lot of like really important like this specific mm -hmm. interaction was broken, you know, and that's the thing that essentially just because we're just a smaller team, we won't be able to play test every iteration of every possible combination. Yeah. Nobody could. There's just because there is a lot. And uh, so that really helps us be like, oh, hey, I never would have thought that the Templar in the Dark Brotherhood Morrowind quest would have this crazy interaction and then they're yeah. really good at being like hey i found this is this an issue or is this a really cool thing because that's like the major question too is like there's a level of it's not a black and white thing as is something overpowered or not there's the question is like well is it actually overpowered is it a really cool effect that makes you feel awesome and feel rewarded for thinking of it yeah all of those kinds of questions um i will probably just put a you know just a little bit of a discount that disclaimer that first and foremost more so than anything else this is an adventure game it's um, yeah the, our question is not I, I, we want it to be balanced yes of course question, of course like, that's not, not me trying to i, I want to be clear that we're not making chess like, yes, like or yeah. we're not we're not and, and, or, or like we're not making cloud spire we're not making cloud spire to like use and, another game and, and also like we're not even making an adaptation of something like dark souls that's supposed to be really punishing mm -hmm. like we are making an adaptation of elder scrolls which is like those video games are not uh, known for being like really, really difficult. They're known mm -hmm. for really being really open ended and like having a lot of giving you a lot of freedom and a lot of you personal a lot of, like, expression kind of, in how you play the game and surprise and stuff yeah. like that. Which is not to say that we want the game to be really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we absolutely and we definitely will touch everything. Like, like yeah. and we and we have and we are and we are doing that. You know, and that's like a big part of what we're doing right now. Um, but it's. Yeah, you're saying it is. It is an adventure. It's an adventure strategy game. Like there's mm -hmm. definitely strategy in it, but like 
this is a game that our, our primary concern always is, is it fun? And so like there are things where it's like, that does seem pretty powerful. And I suppose if you wanted to mimax and you're trying to look for like the math, math, mathematically correct way, I don't think that there actually is anything where it's like, this is the way to do it. Especially not there, in every adventure. Yeah, but there are certainly some builds where you're like, oh, like this is a really interesting exploit that I found that I could really go for. You know, which I actually think it show off on this one, but we kind of discovered that with uh, Pilgrim. Uh, recently, where Pilgrim has a, their 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 top um, their top class, uh, ability. class ability is precision, which is deal target enemy two true damage for each level four skill in your mat. So it does cost you four uh, on the master side, or, or yeah, on the other side, it costs you four tenacity to do it. Um, but uh, depending on how you build your uh, mat out, that is a heck of a ability. You know, mm -hmm. like so, I I, I had. I had uh, built all the way across the line in my illusion skill. Right now, illusion has three different level four skill dice, whereas and most only have one, one or two, maybe two. Yeah, yeah. and then I, and then I also have a level four skill dice slotted in right now with destruction magic. So when we were playing this the other day, I was gaining a lot of tenacity for various reasons, and I was running around just like murking people, get, dealing them eight true damage. Now, is that overpowered? Arguably, I mean, like, but you know, that's, <laughs> but it does cost four tenacity. You know, it's like I, mm -hmm. I'm basically uh, bu building myself to be able to do that. But like, is it fun? Yes, it's extremely fun. And uh, and also, it's like, you know, I, we we simulated that build, but like, basically, like I I would have had to spend like thirty odd mm -hmm. uh, XP to get myself to that. Yep. And so we view that as like this is your reward for hard work. Like you, you put in a lot of like time to like get your guy to do that. Like, and we don't want, we don't want to like punish people. We don't want to punish people who min max, but we also, uh, but we also don't want to say like, uh, you have to do it. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We also don't want to say like, well, you know, this, this, every possible which way is going to be exactly equal in how it works, yep. you know, like, and, and, and yeah. So it, it's, I don't know, that's maybe not a full answer to that question, but it is, it, that balance is definitely is definitely important to us, and it's something we we care about. But like more than that, we care about like vibes. You know, yeah. we want we want it to be fun and thematic to like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and and ultimately, yes, we are going to play everything. We, yes, we, yes. We have we have an R and will be playing yep, and we've, and noting and tweaking. Everything. We took some time to make sure to sort of like almost budget out the like what does our schedule look like for the next month yeah. and a half mm -hmm. plus you know yeah. what does you know what do we want to do with the rest of like tabletop simulator playtesters online you know what do we want to do these things and this is including like not just us internally playtesting too but we've also been running for a few months now uh, external playtesting in-house so like we've been inviting people in yep. to playtest the game every time Andrew goes to conventions and demos it he comes back with a long list of great notes that are like, oh, hey, uh, people are liking the game, but X, Y, Z, you know, how can we fix those things? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it is a lot of content. And, you know, I think there will always be those fringe cases, but because the game also still introduces a number of random elements, like you don't know what enemies you're going to get each encounter because you draw them from the bank. You don't know which encounters you're going to get because you draw them from the deck. All those kinds of things there's always going to be the possibility of those fringe cases where you'll have a build that absolutely just wipes but I in say, a very specific yeah, situation. It's rare that that would be happening. Like, oh, it, yeah. I, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't even think it's rare. I'd say it's, it, that is, it will not happen that that is going to always be true. Yes, like yes. If you, I if you make yourself really, really good at bow, for yeah. example, well, if you go to Morrowind, oh, yeah, then that will be bad for you yeah. because uh, you will get blinded pretty regularly by the... Uh, the, the native, native effect, ability, yeah. and uh, then you will be able to do nothing. You know, like or, or you know, not nothing, not but nothing, like, but but you know, you got to be careful about that. Yeah. You got to figure out like how do I get around this? You know, so yeah, I think it's it's by definition it is a really variable game, and mm -hmm. I would say that like it is important to us that we don't have to use a parlance that a lot of Elder Scrolls players would be familiar with, like that we don't have like a stealth archer, like like a thing of. Like, well, this is how you play. Yeah, the game. yeah. And uh, if you want to, like, play it the best or whatever. Uh, there's nothing like that in this game. I yeah, don't, and I don't think. Um, there probably could be, you could probably absolutely make guides for individual quests, things yeah. like that, you know, which mm -hmm. is normally the first time you play a quest, it's meant to be secret. You mm -hmm. reveal the information as you go. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, if you were to ever replay a quest, you would have that advantage. But it's the same as, like, replaying any video game where, yeah. or any other 
campaign-esque board game where it's it's hidden. Yeah, you get that leg up, but then there's still the rel relative randomness of how the actual game plays out. Yeah. Um, but there could absolutely be guides for like, oh, for this quest, this is the best best build per that opinion. But that build won't be the best for the next quest. Yeah, things exactly. like that. Yep. I'd also say this. If some skill lines inherently are going to look nicer and spicier, they have early dice that deal bigger wads of damage. But later on, they're quite good. So I, I would encourage, if you feel as though you have, quote unquote, solved the game as a mid-maxer, just retire those skill lines for a bit and push different skill lines because they, they do all work. All the skill lines are fun. Yeah. Some of them are more... Yeah. I mean, if I do say so myself. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, we're I, biased, I, but, yeah. but, you know, I mean, I want to we want to make a great game yeah. that people like, so we're yeah. not going to yeah. just blindly ignore things that we don't think are working. Yeah. I went into the lockpick skill line. You know, oh, it's... Test, and I was it's so fun. not interested in it's this. It's fun. I thought it was such a waste. I love that it line. It was so good. It, like, worked really well. And we're putting like lockpicking stuff into a lot of the end games too, where it's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, it's pretty good to have that if you, mm -hmm. if you go into the end game, like. Uh, so or like, there's a like the Skyrim one. You there, know, there's a, a scout class ability called Angler's Instinct. Yes. Uh, which we kind of joke about because the name is funny. Angler's Instinct. It's like, oh yes, I'm a fisherman and I have this instinct yeah. or whatever. But it lets you like oh, look through the delve, fish. like the top two delve cards and like put them back in your order or put them wherever. Yeah. And for a lot of the game, it's just sort of like, eh, I mean, if we go to a delve, that'll be nice, but I'll probably focus on these other class abilities instead. And I was playing as a scout and I got to an end game that was all about like not wanting the big villain to find sky shards. Mm -hmm. And so every turn I was like, oh, look at the top two cards. Any sky shards? Send those to the back. You don't get to see those. And it felt awesome like yeah. to have this ability that would I would have otherwise never expected to be like, oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be the thing that wins us this yeah, game. Absolutely. And absolutely we looked back at it and was like, oh yes, go fisherman. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a few questions. So yeah. you might want to keep them brief. Okay. Um, oh yeah, we're talking a lot. Yeah. Um, will you have people playtesting who do not get a demo, nor know anything about beforehand, and have to read rules by themselves? Yes, we do uh, plan on doing that. Um, I feel like that's way far off. Yeah, we have to, because uh, since the game is constantly being changed, I mean, I shouldn't say constantly at this point anymore, but for the while, it was like still going through relatively larger changes. I think those changes are becoming smaller and smaller by the day. Um, but our rule book has sort of just been kind of existing in a malleable state and hasn't been put to like the level of, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? But like, obviously it hasn't been graphic designed, but it hasn't even been like consolidated into the format that we want it to take. Like yeah. currently it's a big rules doc on Google Sheet or Google Docs. Yeah. And I think be... eventually we want it to split it up into sort of like an approachable how to play and a rules reference. And a rules reference. Yeah. Um, and yes, that, that will be a thing. Though. But yes, we absolutely want to make sure, because I, having taught this game to a lot of people, I'm sure you could probably corroborate this. Mm -hmm. I think this is a remarkably easy game to teach to someone. I am yeah. always surprised. Uh, Two of my now most common playtesters who have come in again and again, um, one of them has, you know, she's played, she played too many bones before and she's like, oh, these are great. And then her husband like was like, oh, I don't want to play any complicated games. And it took her a long, long time before even getting him to play too many bones, you know, and he like he, he got it, but it was definitely like, oh, this is really kind of complicated. And then when we tried this one, they were both like, wow, we we got it. Now, granted. I was teaching them the game. I was taking the rules and presenting them in a way that was easier for me to teach and hopefully easier for them to learn. What we want to make sure is that how the rule book is structured and formatted, it is not only an easy game to teach to somebody, but it's an easy game to learn from the rule book. That is yeah. absolutely what we want. Um, we also do have plans on really making sure to look into doing teaching videos as well because I think this is the type of game that a lot of people will look at and go there's too much going on that's a lot but in all of my play tests and all of my demos and all of my experiences no matter how like unfamiliar people are with more complicated games 
to an extent, to an extent, obviously. Um, if nobody, if somebody's never played a game more complicated than like Trouble, you know, they might have a hard time. Um, but uh, people, things start to make sense. People, they start to get into the rhythm of it, and it's remarkable how many people I have seen go from like oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this too, by the end of even just their first game, are like already making decisions completely on their own, already taking their full turns on their own, already excited about what they want to do next time because now they get it. Um, mm -hmm. So. Any other questions? Yes. Um, one I think I can answer, but, you know, you're the design team. So um, are any skill trees still being designed or is it more fine-tuning at this point? Are you adding big chunks of stuff still? fine-tuning. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It, you know, we we still are making changes. Like we made some changes to the night yesterday, mm -hmm. but it's more. But it's more like this skill isn't quite working, but it's a good idea. So let's. What can we do to just kind of like tweak it? You know, mm -hmm. a few degrees. Yeah. But no, there's nothing. There's no more. Honestly, I would say there's nothing that's not designed at this point. Basically, right? Games, I think that's game's finished. Yeah. True. Yeah. Like like it's it's all it's all it's all adjustments. Yep. Uh, I think that is true. Well, uh, so let's adjust because there are like 325 encounters in here. There's a ton of skill lines. There's a ton of 18 uh, classes. Class lines. Uh, there's like 150 more. plus items or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yep. So, Whenever so. people say, are you going to add X or are you going to add Y? The answer is always going to be no. Yeah. Uh, per there is currently too much in the game. Yeah. And <laughs> Keyword too much. The, uh, like, you know, but like. Possible expansions in the future, here. though. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're so do, like we're going to for the thing. So yep. Yeah. So like people asking, like, oh, is there going to be new skill lines? Hopefully, down the line, like in future expansions. We have a spreadsheet written down. We have a spreadsheet. Yeah. You know. yep. um, is werewolves, vampires, when when come, when be? Uh, hmm? maybe. Right. Maybe. <laughs> we talk. Not about in this right. wave right. of right. content. Right. content. Right. Not in this right. round of content, though. Right. Right. To, right to your congressperson. I will say that if we did do that, we have I think a very cool idea for how that. We do. We have yeah. Um, eat the health chips in reality. Uh, and then the last one is, is there a timeline for when you need to finish playtesting to get it to production, to get it to people's tummies so they can hold it against their tummy and then unload it onto I, the table and play it? This is the whole I mean, question. I'm not just you're, saying this. That's I, from this okay. one. I would, I would hesitate to, I don't, I don't, I, I think we're kind of not really allowed to talk about that. Honestly. Yeah, I think there's, uh, there's so much more into the timeline discussion that goes beyond our company our yeah our so company and and even our, like our department yeah. our company all those things um, a lot of moving parts as far as play testing goes though I mean I think we're hoping to have gone through stuff through no I would love it if we could be done with 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 the majority of playtesting by the end of November mm -hmm. um, we'll see like yeah. I mean like this is the you know the struggle of all like kind of like commercial art if i can be like really uh pretentious for a second is that like uh you know you it has to go it has to come out it has to these people people want it and people we, we want to have it to people oh yeah um but also like we have to we, we want to make it good and so like i'm very confident that it will be that um like you know we want we want to get it speedily to you um Everybody here wants to, I mean, especially because like this, we've worked in this game. We've been working in this game for so much longer than any of y'all have been aware of it. I will say, <laughs> um, and uh, so we really want it to come out. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and, it's coming out, and like, so it is. We're it is. It we're right. I know. But we want, <laughs> what I mean is, like, we want it to come out like as soon as we can get yeah. it out to you. Yeah. But also, like the balance about always is that like we would never put something. We never have this company. Never has put out anything that we were like. That we didn't think it was good like mm -hmm. like like there i mean i think that there have been some projects obviously that, that some people aren't the biggest fans of uh you know not not everybody i think everybody likes it you know i think every game we've made and it includes like trip lock game pick game you know the old hop list and stuff everything we put out has fans we still definitely have people who come up to us at convention that are like you ever gonna put more trip lock stuff you know oh yeah and obviously that that game wasn't yeah when didn't are like we the world putting on, more? yeah it didn't like the world on fire you know like trip lock two like, coming up like some of our some of our games have but like um you know so our games may, might have like wane wane and wax in popularity but like uh everything we've ever put out we were like we're not gonna put it out until it is ready until it is 
where we want it to be until it is going to be like a fun experience, you know? And so, uh, and, I, and honestly, like that's, I don't think we're anything special in that regard. Like you yeah. know, anyone oh, yeah. you talk to in this industry, like that's what they all want, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so like, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 we can't really talk about the timeline stuff other than to say that like, we are working on it like as hard as we can, like truly, like especially, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody in the dev department is obviously we have other games and stuff and uh, but like sam and i like this has been like our primary job for a long time like mm -hmm. is is working on this thing and um yeah it's it's uh it's very important um but uh also it's very it's, it's very important that it come out and it's also very important that it is good yeah you know so but yeah, we can't really talk about like the specifics. Yeah, any stuff. any kind of official update timeline stuff will be through through Gilly through or, Gilly or uh, Josh because they know. Oh, updates, yeah, because yeah. like again too, so much of it goes beyond our department. Even. Yeah. So like even if even if we were to have everything perfect ready to go tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. There'd still be a lot of things that'd be like, oh, you know, well, we got to factor these things and are we waiting for this stuff and yada, yada, right. stuff there's like that. There's graphic so. design, there's translations, there's yeah. approvals from, from Bethesda or Zenimax, you know, like yeah. there's... So we wouldn't be able to... There's shipping, there's manufacturing. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, like uh, anyone who's familiar with like our stuff like would, you yeah. know, obviously like Hoplo was delayed last year, like it was supposed to come out last year and there was, you know, uh, an unfortunate like manufacturing issue that like... You know, not we didn't have any control over, it, but also like the people, our manufacturers, you know, were, you know, were very. It was just a weird thing. It was yeah. just like a freak you know. occurrence. Then they were like, like, sorry, like, we'll we'll fix the problem and stuff. So we're not trying to throw that in the budget. It's just like sometimes things stuff happens, like, yeah. and if we finish tomorrow, things could still happen. Yeah. And so that's that's just to sort of point out, just to reiterate, it's not saying that we're not trying to like make any subtle hints about like oh things we're just not telling you guys that we're trying to hint at. Yeah. The main takeaway of this is just simply like. As just members of the dev department, we yeah. just don't know. Yeah. Like that, and, the, and we, and it's also not our place no, to say. Not our place to say. Yeah. So uh, this is a yeah. This ekes into a comment I just saw um, with wanting to pay attention to our quality because Unbreakable was of a lower quality than our other work. I I would what? say production quality wise, not not as in content. The dev team, you're safe. Um, and also, I would say production quality, um, that is, it's it's easy. This is the thing with the internet. It's easy to get into an, a group of people that you see around you who are posting that a thing is Oh, bad. I see. Okay, I see. This, this is a bubble that happens to the internet. It's, you see the issues. But this game has the highest production run of any game we've ever produced, to my understanding. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, um, by, yeah, by this one far. will be the next one, right? Yes, oh, yeah. this will be the next one. Yeah. Um, production numbers versus defects, incredibly low. Yeah. Like, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. For amount produced. So, yeah, because yeah, it's like, like for, yeah, you never you see have, the people who get perfect copies, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no one's going to post pictures of their perfect copies online and go, look at how good this looks. <laughs> like, I mean, because it, it, look, it looks like how it's supposed to look. Yeah, yeah. It looks like, so, if, like, if you have bubbles, if you have scratches, feel free to reach out to our support team. They're great, they're responsive, mm -hmm. Absolutely. they will yeah. do yeah. what they can. I, I do know that, issue. you know, uh, especially anytime during like a campaign too, so like with a Hoplo campaign, there's always an increased yes. amount of traffic yes. to our customer service team. So, I'll just also. Yeah want to say too like uh i know if there if there ever is a delay in the response mm -hmm. know that they they have it they'll be trying to work on, on it as soon as possible same too with like any kind of like component replacement stuff whether it's we're just backed up per normal or sometimes too and this happens like with like manufacturing stuff if there is a larger issue that is a little bit more widespread oftentimes we just because the way we get stuff from our manufacturers like we'll get a bunch of like excess games that we can pull from and things yeah. like that. But if there's ever a larger issue, oftentimes we do not have the stock. And so we need to wait to try and get yeah. that specific replacement thing from our manufacturers. We're not, yeah, we're not telling you uh, you're out of luck. We're telling you like, well, we don't have the thing. And mm -hmm. so when we get the thing, we can get it to you. Yeah. But, but no, that's a good point though. Like it's like, it, yeah, like I, it's yeah. The, the way that our games are made are really specialized and we do appreciate our manufacturers like a lot and yeah. like they they're wonderful especially, working with us yes honestly. Like, yeah. yes because we we, we have them we we put them through a lot of 
pain I think, <laughs> in terms of like all the weird stuff we asked them to do you know especially like gameland who's done like uh, who's done too many bounds for such a long time? It's like they really have had like this really long, and that's not, nothing against like our other manufacturers either, but just like Gameland has, has really for a long time had to kind of adjust to us and like figure out like how our games work. And even then, there are still issues sometimes. And it's not like Gameland is doing a bad job. It's just a matter of like, like you have to assemble all of our stuff like by hand in a way that like, <laughs> and, and, and that's and that's because of the way that the games work. It's like we don't make cardboard stuff. You can't just print a bunch of stuff onto like, like the card. punch boards. And we can't, yeah. can't. We don't have punch board stuff. Like you know, it's yeah, and every so. Every chip in your copy of Too Many Bones was stickered by hand. Yeah, um, and, which is insane. To yeah, me. and so <laughs> you know, again, like we're not saying like live with it if you have like those uh, if you do have a production issue, but like you know, understand that like. There are human beings who are involved in this stuff, and and also understand that like we can get that fixed for you. You know, yeah. like um, that being said, there's also issues that are just like a ding in a box is not. We we can't send you boxes. That's that's yeah, true. That's just not a that's thing. That's true. But I think um, now we're getting into a different department. This yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to comment too much um, on our. But all uh, this to yeah, say, because there's a lot of stuff will, we might not know. You will probably see some issues with an Elder Scroll production run, just because that's the nature of it. It's a huge run. Reach out to support. That's a hundred years away, but you know, and, and, I hope and it's not. not and, and it's not going to be. I, and we're not yeah. saying that you will find a problem with your box, but no. like there will be some issues, as there are with literally anything that's made ever. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. but you know, uh, we 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 do our best to try to rectify that stuff as soon as we can. So. All right. Yeah. All right. Should we be done now? Yeah, we should be done now. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Uh, Can we just start a war fun. in the comments. We answered some questions, and I think we'll probably try to do this again as long as people uh, people enjoyed it. So. Unless Andrew yeah. gets a ton of emails from all of you being yeah. like, "That you was terrible." All right. Yeah. All right. Again, let us know what you want to see, and we'll try to prioritize that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Let's wave until the stream's over. Yeah. Keep waving. Not over. It takes like five, ten minutes for it to actually end. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. Why do we keep working on those things? Um, when is the next live stream? Um, probably, uh, probably a week. Is next? Uh, are we doing a live stream next Thursday? We're not going to be here next week. I'm not going to be here, so I don't care. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it. Do it in that live stream. <laughs> Let's do it. I said keep are waiting. we done? <laughs> <laughs>